Morning. Come on, it's six o'clock. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. It's time for early break. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. Live from Lincoln, America. Here's Jake Sorensen. Did seem kind of meh. Husker Online, Steve Sipple. Surprisingly good. And longtime college football assistant coach, Bill Bush. I want to buy a couple ducks. I'm bringing two ducks down to the office. This is Early Break. Good morning, happy Thursday to you, Steve Sipple, Jake Swartz, an early break, Bill Bush out today, again, he's back on Monday, we miss him today, but uh, we'll see him soon, how are you? We do miss him, it seems like he called my phone last night, kind of late, he did, did you answer? No, I was, it was late. Uh, if he, if you're listening, how late is late? If you're listening, Bill. It was about nine thirty. That is late. Uh, I was in bed. I was. I was. Were in, you awake or? I was in. Asleep? I was. I was fogged out. Fogged out. Yeah. Fogged out. Uh, Bill's gone. Josh is back. He is for the our personnel report. Josh was uh, in Oklahoma City for a, a Thunder Kings game on Wednesday. We'll hear more Back about today, that. though. Yeah, we'll more hear. We'll hear more about that. I'm always interested. Or two. I mean, it must have been Tuesday night. You played that, that game. Was came Tuesday back yesterday, night, right? Tuesday night. You're yes, here. I'm, I'm here. here. Yeah, we're here. So there's your personnel report. <laughs> uh huh. Yes. That, thank you for that report. Yeah. Appreciate good morning that. to you. You've got the handsome on three polo on today. You like that? He's, I've I've never seen that polo before. People say I should dress better. If you have ever worn that, it has been uh, <laughs> tucked away below a jacket. You've never, you've never showed that polo off. It's very nice. Well, thank you, Jake. That's a good, that's a good look. I'm with the compliments. You need some money? No, I don't need any money. You got an incoming? I do have an incoming. Baby, you might need a little money. Is that what's going do on? I, do, you, do people pay for compliments now? <laughs> That'll cost you five bucks for that one. <laughs> yeah, put, I'll put it on your tab. <laughs> thank you. Put it on your tab. Thank you. You're I welcome. should wear, well, I should tell you, Sean Callahan, um, he encourages me to wear better clothes. He's he's very kind about it. It's there's sort of subtle hints. Um, sometimes they're not. They trend towards not as subtle. Like, hey, um, here's a website with on three stuff. <laughs> you can order some, and I'll and and you can order like three hundred dollars worth, <laughs> and I'll take care. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about that for temptation there? Yeah, just go through this and see what you like. Yeah, I'm going to. You want that that pullover, that three quarter, that that full court, that full zip? Mm-hmm. Get it. It's all yours. Um, it's nice. And yeah, thank you. It's so great. It a little chillier this morning, I thought. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, was, it was like 72 yesterday. It's gonna be like 62 today. A little, a little bit chillier oh, today. So it, it did. It's get a not chillier. gonna be like cold. It's gonna be a little, a little bit chillier out there. Okay. A little chillier yeah. for this Thursday. It's a glorious time though, because you don't run your air conditioner. Or your heater, right? Right. It, it depends on what it gets down to be at it, 65 degrees or so that you, you can just kind of let it be. I, I didn't yes. I didn't run my I'm with you on that. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's also an awesome time because today is day one of the Masters. The <laughs> Masters. Remember that? You know that golf tournament? You aware of that? It is day one of the Masters. And we don't have any. T- <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'll, okay. I'll shut up. Go. Mm. Look at Josh. Yes. Uh, Augusta National. Day one. The Masters. Hello, friends. <laughs> Jim Nance here. <laughs> I'm not going to interrupt Jim Nance. This music you hear for four days, though. It's beautiful. <laughs> we're going to do a quiet show today. Is. We should do a show. A mm. quiet show like we're at Augusta. On, on the premises. On the premises. <laughs> we did that already. In the hotel room of Memphis, Tennessee. We already did the Augusta National show. So there's the, the beautiful tones of Augusta National. You hear that? Sadly, there's, there's going to be a, del- a little bit of delay today. There's some weather this morning. So the tea time's usually around 8 o'clock, Central Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. They're going to be a little delayed because of weather in Augusta, Georgia. I regard that with profound sad. You should. <laughs> you should. We have to wait I, for the yeah, greatest I'm, tournament in the world for a, couple, a few more hours than we wanted to. That is devastating. It is devastating. <laughs> we'll be fine, though. As long as as long as the Masters finishes as it's supposed to on Sunday and not Monday, then we can live. 
with this. It'll be we're fun. gonna we're gonna relive this conversation. Or we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna, gonna have do this. Masters talk at six thirty. Yeah, I'll have a couple uh, long shots. How about more. how about this though? On on that note, Sean in Omaha just chimed in and says, "Good morning, boys. I'm heading to the Masters today. Have a great show." You're kidding, Sean. Have fun. Take me with you. It's actually bad. I can't do that. He's, he's heading to the warm embrace of Gu- Augusta National. That sounds pretty fun. It's a warm embrace, isn't it? That's what that. That's, a, that's what you, that. You can't is. walk. I think in that course or out of that course in a bad mood, unless it's oh, rained out. Oh, if, I'm sure you. If could. it ra- well, if you lost the tournament, sure. If, if you lost, golfer, if you lost a lot of money on John Rahm. Well, the, again, you take the betting out of it and enjoy the right. experience of the pimento cheese sandwiches and the beautiful green, lush fairways and. And, and greens, everything is really beautiful. I will the tell azaleas. you, and you know this about me, I could produce a bad mood out of about anything. I've seen it before. <laughs> seen it before. <laughs> Witnessed it many times. <laughs> Not many. A few times. <laughs> several times. Let's go with several. That's how I'll sit on that. Anything else feel bad for you? Anything else for idle chit-chat for you, Sip? Uh, from yesterday. Idle chit-chat. Um... I was struck by something at Wells Fargo that they emphasize. It was a, it was, it was a quote that they have in there and I don't have the quote. I should have taken a picture of it, but it was from, I think John Wells, who must be, you know, well, by the Wells Fargo right. part of the brand. Yeah. That, Thank you. That it was that their brand is built on a single word or it's a single word is emphasized. I should say, you know what that word is? It's something that we should think about. It's something that everybody should think hmm. about. One word. Courtesy. Courtesy. I was struck by that. Courtesy. Where did you see this at? It was it was, in the bank somewhere? Yeah, it was in the. It was at the Wells Fargo on is it framed? 48th and Superior. Is it like a picture? No, here's, here's the setting. 48th and Superior, if you're standing in line at the Wells Fargo and you glance up, there's a quote. There's a quote. On the, oh, on the part of the area right above the tellers, and I was struck by it. Courtesy. It's that's a oh, it's a word we probably don't consider enough in this society. Seriously, courtesy. Just be courteous. I'm struggling to to. You said 48th and Superior. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think it that's could the be right. 27th and Superior. <laughs> that's it's 27th and Superior. <laughs> Did go. you ever get 27th and 48th? No, because 48th is where like there's Culligan up there. Well, and that, and 48th runs basically. into the dump too. Um, that's how I that you keep going north. Yeah, yeah, sure does. 48 runs into the dump. Yes, you got it. Yeah, I, I always mix up 27th and 48th until I think, oh no, wait a second, 48th runs into the dump. You know, there's businesses at 27th. Right. 48th, there's just one. This is 27th and Superior. Okay, okay. got you. Thank you. I, I know where you're at now. Yeah, so, Jake, I think that's something. Courtesy. Courtesy per Wells Fargo and, and John Wells, one of the founders of, of Wells Fargo. I think it's John. Is, it, that took you, that, that, that was important to you yesterday. I'm glad. Yeah. Hey, John, uh, I'm not sure that it was, it's the quote from John Wells, but it was a quote. It says here that John Stumpf is the CEO of Wells Fargo. I don't know. Whatever. It was a, it was a quote from whoever wells is of wells fargo and it was courtesy and i thought that was beautiful i thought that was beautiful thank you for that and then john wells uh this is from jesse and milford and, and idle chit chat now this this is maybe the most surprising thing i've ever seen in the text line ready for that how about um, that hold on it? now hold on you just said what one of the most surprising texts i think i've ever seen on the text, text line. line you're kidding me now the, we've been doing this show for how long Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. You're going okay. This better be because good. I don't know how this is possible. Jesse and Milford, if you not, tell me, you're not pulling my leg in this, Jesse. He says, "I love Augusta National. I won a four-person round of golf there in 2005. That was my favorite round of golf I've ever played. I would hope so. I've never heard of Augusta National, the most private course in the world, just offering up a four-person scramble." For a four-person four person outing. Well, couldn't you have... You know how hard it is to get on, on Augusta National? If you're money... How hard it is to become, to become a member in general there? They don't just allow four-person outings there. Hmm. If that's okay. actually true from Jesse and Milford, how? Where did you sign up for that one at? And how can okay. I get involved in that? Here's my question to you. Uh, my familiarity with this conversation is very limited. It's limited to covering 
Nebraska head football coaches who occasionally were invited to play Augusta National and would go down and play like Blake right. Laney. Yes. Couldn't he just go down and play with four guys, three guys? Go down and play I don't with- know how he, he had to probably know a member, I'm mm-hmm. sure, down there. It's a, it, I'm sure that's what so it was. So I guess with Jesse, you t- chimed in. Was there a member who offered this up? Hey, you and, can win a foursome you yeah. know, golf outing with me. Yeah, and that member had two friends. So there's a member, two friends, and Jesse. I need to know that member and be friends with them. I'm not as struck by it as you are. You can play. I mean, they, it's a golf yeah, course. I hear about, they have people playing golf on it. You hear about uh, Corey Oaks giving away a four-person scramble or, or Beatrice <sighs> Country Club. Augusta National? I can't imagine St. Andrews just gives away four-person scrambles out there, four-person outings. Hmm. I didn't, I didn't think that Augusta National would do that. I'm, I'm proud that they do. That's pretty. That's a pretty cool gesture, mm-hmm. but it's surprising to me. Huh. So, yeah, I'm going with the most surprising text in the text line. Okay. I All right. It's Henry Wells, by the way. Henry Wells. So who's John Wells? Then? Okay, here's the quote. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get this right because we've done this thing on this show where we've been a little loose with facts. Okay. I'm just reading straight off of uh, thebanker.com. And just go with me on this. In 1864, the bank's co-founder, it's Henry Wells. Henry Wells laid out his philosophy. There was one very power. This is, this is described by another person. There was one very powerful business rule. It was concentrated in the word courtesy. Courtesy. All right. Courtesy, a Thank word you. we do not ponder enough. All right. Thank you. Let's go on with one, one more. Jesse and Milford has chimed oh. back in. <laughs> yeah, go back to the text. Because, it, well, this is important. He's responding to, back to the question. said, how did you get, on, you get on there? He yeah. says, I was living in Jacksonville, Florida, okay. and I was in the U.S. Navy. We had a Christmas party raffle, and the commanding officer was a member at Augusta National. Go. Well, good on that commanding officer to even offer that as a, as a prize. That's very cool. Yeah, Jacksonville, probably not that far away from. Uh, a little bit. And just know, Jesse, that you have millions of people who are jealous of that round of golf you played, including myself. And he, 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 and he struck the ball well. He didn't say that. He said he, he that was his favorite round of golf he's ever played. Well, he won. He won. The- no, I said, Jesse, won the round of golf to yeah. go play. I mean, he played well. Oh, well, you would think if he won the round of golf. nothing. He won the round of golf. It was, oh, a, he won it was the a raffle. Ra- oh, I, he okay. Won. Words. <laughs> I thought. It was he won the round of golf. No, he, he won the raffle three. to go play golf. Oh, at that point, who cares how well you play? You're playing freaking Augusta National. I thought he meant he beat his no, three. He won the raffle to get yeah. in to Augusta. That's he scored saying. the lowest of his foursome, is what I was thinking. I get where he's going. That was he never won the, the round of, of that golf. conversation. <laughs> That's <laughs> one last thing, and I'll get you. No, we're it. not. It's a great start. <laughs> one last thing before we get going. It's a rough start. No, it's not. Uh, a, a quick shout out once again because we carry them on the station. Sip the Kansas City Royals have won six straight games. They beat the Astros eleven to two last night on these airwaves, ninety three point seven FM. They're now eight and four. Their best start in years eight in Kansas four. City. Eight and four. Eight and four. Starting rotation twelve games in one point nine seven ERA. Is that any good? The answer is yes. Can you name is. two of them? Yes, Michael Walker. Cole Reagans, Brady Singer, Seth Lugo, Alec Barnes. How about all five? How about that? You're boom, boom, boom. boom. You're on it, Jay. There we go. That's good. Good that, job. That is Idle Chit Chat, sponsored by Newton's Lawn Care. Please call or text Andrew in the squad at 402-440-6297. off your first fertilizer application this spring. This is it. This I is would call time. him right now if I were you. Yeah. If you haven't yet, I, I'd call Andrew. It's I guarantee time. he's up. He is up. He's, he's working. Four, say that number again. 402-440-6297. All right. Uh, today, Matt Rule will speak after practice because there's a scrimmage on Saturday. We've not seen a scrimmage yet this spring. No. I know, I know. What? No. We have, confirmed yet. we have not had an official scrimmage yet this spring. But, Sip, you are curious from the breakers, and we are curious in general. Uh, for Matt Rule, what are you curious to hear from the head coach today? 402-464-464. Five six eight five. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I start, obviously, what quarterbacks will always be a question when, you, when you've got two freshman quarterbacks coming in in Raiola and De- and Daniel Kalen. Understandably so, they should be the biggest story. Those those that's your leaders of the of the clubhouse, so to speak. 
in this golf tournament. We'll address the quarterbacks in one moment after I point out something you had on the what did I write? The rundown. I wondered if this was as I was reading this last night. Did I miss typo something? No, oh. I was wondering is if, if this was um, written with a degree of oh uh, sarcasm. Sarcasm. Good chance. We heard from Rule this past Saturday. After the coaches' clinic weekend, you write in the rundown. The next line, what's changed in the last five days? <laughs> <laughs> there might have been some sarcasm there. I'm not going to. You're learning. You're oh, learning. Come on. What? What's changed? What's... <laughs> well, here's what you got to do. In Read that how you want Here's what you do in our world, okay? It's like you got to keep the beach ball alive in the air. Yeah. Keep it alive. Maybe not much has changed in five days, but we got to make it seem like it has. Okay. You have to keep the conversation going. That's what we do, right? That's mm -hmm. what I do in this, in, in my multi roles. You gotta, essentially, you're keeping the conversation going. What's changed in the last five days? <laughs> Just sip. You it don't was, need to go hey, over it there. Wasn't, it wasn't meant to be completely sarcastic. Why even sarcastic. go over there? It wasn't meant to be completely sarcastic. It was a general question. As you asked me once, why even go? That was to, to wings and rings for five wings. <laughs> By the way, I had lunch here yesterday. It was delightful. Oh, and I had good. 10 wings. <laughs> we'll talk I had about, 10 wings. All right, table that. We'll talk about that later. Okay, table that. All right, quarterback. So what? here's what you do. You try to get a feel for how it's looking. He's my, Matt rule he just happens to be this incredible media coach i mean he's a he's so good with the media is what i'm saying he's incredible with the media now will he say someone is moved out in front no probably not no it'd be it'd be startling what what if he said yeah dylan rayola has moved out by quite a ways what would that Gonna hit the breaking. No, news. no, it's not hit breaking. <laughs> what, news. what would that do? It would give us three days of of topics. Dylan is expected to be the starter, yes, for the fall. But to say that this early would be relatively surprising. Yes, I would. It wouldn't go be, with that. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprising for you or I to say it. But if the head coach says it, it's a little different, right? Yes. Now that said, he's he's so he's probably not gonna go there. I doubt it. But he'll talk about that race, and he'll he'll probably give you something that you will be playing on a sounder tomorrow. Sounder is that right? You'll be playing it's that clip, sound. Yeah, yeah. You'll be playing a clip a tomorrow. Sound bite. Yeah, sound bite. There will be that tomorrow. So you want to get? So how do you gauge it? I don't know. I I don't want to put you on the spot. It's my job to do this. You have to ask a question where you think you can get something out of it. You know, if you give me a chance here to th think <laughs> about it, I mean, it, it could be as simple, and, and people do this, is how's the quarterback situation looking? It's a pretty open-ended question. Right. It's you, you harmless. Don't, right. You would you try to not make it so open-ended. I mean, you could. it could be, would you say anybody's gained separation? That's a good question. At this point. You, 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 may, you may preface it by saying you are now – this is this is practice number eight, I believe, of the spring. You're now halfway in, or over halfway in. Has anybody gained separation? Pause there for a second, because I I think that Matt, Matt Rule can't really win with with the answer to that question. You want to know why? Here why? here's why. Because why? if he says there's no separation, there's two ways to look at that. Number one, people say, oh. Raiola's having a tough going camp. Yeah. The clear starter, our guy, yeah, he's right. not pulling away no. from Kalen, who had a rough senior year at Bellevue right. West. Come no. on. No, you're right. Number two, it's just, yeah, he's not giving us any information. So, yeah, if, if he says there's no separation, you're, I think the response is going to be, what's wrong with Dylan? <laughs> Which is not fair. He's a freshman <laughs> before he even plays his first game. I think that's no, no, that's no, no, hysteria, no. Sip. You know that's true. No, 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 if no. If he says, no, I'm no. telling you right now. no. If he says there's no separation, their first response would be, oh, God, what's wrong with that's Dylan? That's your response. No, that's the fan response. No, that, it, not the I'm not saying it's the proper or right response. That's what the response will be from that's people. That's not the reasonable response. No, it's not. You're right. <laughs> it's not. But guess what? And it Fanatics would, are fans. Not everybody is as off the chain as you. <laughs> I disagree with you Listen, on this, You see by the message way. boards every day, I Mr. Disagree. Husker Online. On three. <laughs> hut, hut, hut. 
I disagree with staunchly on this. I don't think people would make that jump that Dylan's, if there's no separation. Dylan's, I don't say that they should. Right. I'm saying that they will. You are you live in a message board world now in Husker Online. I bet that if that is uttered, maybe somebody you will see a thread saying something's wrong with Dylan no. Viola. He can't pull away from Daniel Kalen in spring ball. No, here's why. Here's why I would say that's not going to be an issue. Okay, because even uh, if Rule were, were to say that, it wouldn't just negate all the positive reviews of Dylan to this point. I think people in the message board world more than anybody knows that he's having, he's, he's looked good. He's had, an, he's had enough good showings in the spring where one comment by the head coach, and I'm going to call it, that would be an innocuous comment. Wouldn't, wouldn't just shoot down all the good vibes. So no, it's not. And I don't know what Matt would say, but one, the other thing, just steering away from the quarterbacks for a second and I have heard they, they've looked good. Good. The scrimmage and the scrimmage discussion is sort of interesting, Jake, because they haven't had a full scale scrimmage yet. And it's April eleventh. Um now Sean, I'm reading from Sean Callahan on Husker Online right now. And you will scrimmage on Saturday, and he's told the play count could push 180. That's a full-scale scrimmage. But the way rule practices, and again, you could formulate a question around this topic. Anybody who went to that practice on Saturday, and there was a lot of people because it was a coach's clinic day and That's right. former players were invited. And those guys would tell you there's a lot of contact. There was tackling. Um, not full scrimmage, but the full scrimmage – Discussion could be a little overrated because they do they go through drills and they go through teamwork where there is some tackling. And I I mean I saw it firsthand on Tuesday, uh, a you know a, a period where it was eleven on eleven moving the ball down the field with everything but tackling to the ground. It looked live. I mean it was live. It was referees. It was moving the ball down the field. So yeah. They haven't scrimmaged, but those kids, it won't be like a shock to their system. It, now, I, as you, you, you can enter this conversation because you would go to the, remember, was it the Riley? It was the Riley. I, I used era. to go to practices. Yeah. I was yeah, there. Was Riley I would go era. to practices back in the day. Right. Well, it was Riley. It wasn't, you, did you go to Bo practice? I think I went to a couple of Scott practices too. Frost Scott, did, well, did the you, rare ones that were of the rare half hour you got a couple times. I went to those, but think, I just want you to go back in time to the Riley era where remember those practices, the scrimmages where we would see the entire yes. thing. Wouldn't you just, how intrigued would you be to watch Dylan Rayola and Danny Kalen in a scrimmage setting on Saturday? I'd be very intrigued. Yeah. I'd, I'd be too. very, it's still just the spring. It's not an actual game. It's still, against a different school, but Hey, what, what's the progress level here? How they look at it against division one competition. Yeah, and a, and a very you know very high level defense, number eleven defense in the country last year, per the stats. And I and I and I, and I do think it's a good defense. I don't. I just think it's. I uh, I mean, there's a couple positions where I'd be a little worried, but not not. Uh oh, what? What's funny? Going back to my <laughs> hypothetical scenario where <laughs> rule says in the in this question you would ask today. What's the you know what's the competition like? And if he says there's not much separation, and I say that'd be hysteria here. No, it wouldn't. But go ahead. Here's some response, please, from the text line, which is never hysterical. Always <laughs> even even keel text line. Ryan in Delaware, four zero two four six four five six eight five. You can call or or text four zero two four six four five six eight five. Ryan says, "Sip, Jake is right. I am an extremely level-headed person, <laughs> and even I." Would wonder what's wrong with him if that if those words are uttered today by Matt Rule. Can't I convince you, Ryan, that the head coach is not going to probably go up there and, and give the job to somebody eight practices into spring? And if he, and that's if what he, I'm saying. He can't win. He can't win right. in this conversation. And if he was, if that question's posed, right. he can't win. Well. Okay, that begs the question. Then should I pose? You the, should ask the question. <laughs> the question being. Has anybody gained separation? That's a pretty simple question to ask. 
Yeah, with not a very simple answer though. Well, but would Matt Rule regard that question with a level of disdain? Why are you asking me that? We're only eight practices in. I can't win this conversation. If I say there's none, people are going to freak out about. Uh, I see if he says that. I'm like, listen, that's what you're supposed to say. It's a proper response. <laughs> to say, oh, this is what I'm supposed to say. Well, but I don't want to say that. What else on the text line? Texter says. Uh, People would say that, Sip. Jake is right. <laughs> no, I'm not trying. Give to, me just somebody on my side. There's nobody that's saying that you're right on this Find one. somebody. <laughs> Find somebody right now. Yeah. I don't I don't understand that then. I And I do live in a little bit of a different world, I think, sometimes. But I, I wouldn't react that way if he said that. Because you're in the media and you're not a fan that lives in a hysterical world day to day. Fanatics? Yeah. They okay, grab on. I, they grab on to anything that they can have drama. Well, with. I just don't think it would be productive for the head coach to stand up there, even if there is separation, and say that. He might, and maybe I'm wrong about it. About maybe he will. Maybe he would say that. So imagine hysteria if he said Daniel Kalen has separated himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not prepared for that one, are you? Nobody is. No. <laughs> that would set the city on fire. The state. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me say, what's wrong with Dylan at that point? Oh, man, I bought these twenty-four dollar glasses. Try to break them, and the lens is coming out already. Okay, so oh, okay. Let, let's see. There's, there, might, there might be some response now in supporting you. On I'd this love, one. love to hear that. Uh, Thomas says, "Sip, you wish you were right on this one, so not really supporting you on that one." Uh, Joe and Boulder says, "I'm pretty passionate about it, and if I heard there was no separation, I would actually be pleased that all three quarterbacks were improving." I think Joe's in the Minority, minority there, yeah. minority. But I appreciate that honesty there. I really do too. Swift from, from Lincoln uh, says, "Sip, you're right. I don't think fans would lose their minds in this hypothetical." I don't. I really don't, Jake. I don't. Not reasonable fans. Brett in Lincoln says, "Sip, ask the question. He makes millions of bucks. He can answer the questions we were all wondering about." Brett in Lincoln. This, I think it's if a legit the fans question. are curious, you should ask the question. Well, yeah, you have to ask about the quarterbacks. It's just a, it's just determining in what form do you pose the question? And one way to do it would be, are you seeing separation at the quarterback position? I think that's a fair question. Now, the debate would be, oh, really, is it fair? There are only eight practices in the spring. They haven't had a scrimmage yet. So maybe it's not fair. I'm not convinced I would ask it at this point in my life, at this point of the day. I'll bandy that about my head. Jake, there are eight practices in and have not scrimmaged. You need to ask the question. Are you sure yep. without a scrimmage, or would it be more appropriate well, you can, after you, the scrimmage? You can add that to the end of the question or the start of it. I know there's no scrimmage yet, but has there been separation at quarterback yeah, at all? I Very simple. Could, yeah, I think you, you can preface it with that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it says we'll see you after the scrimmage, and that's a great no no answer there from Matt. Rowe. I mean, I think you got to ask a question that gives a nod to their to Dylan and Daniel Kalen's youth too. You got to say something along the lines of what. What has been the biggest challenge you've seen from the from those two freshmen? What what have they struggled with? You know, what do they have to overcome? I'd be interested to hear that. Um, boy, I'll tell you, Mike Minter was on these airwaves on the ticket. Mike Minter, former Nebraska defensive back. Panthers stud, yep. Defensive Panthers stud. Yep. Yeah, I, heard, Panthers I heard that stud. I heard that clip. He was on the captain's show, right? Yes, he was. And I heard that clip that say Dylan Rayola is just a guy that is a quarterback that comes around once every twenty years. Now Mentor watched him. Okay, Mentor watched him. Mentor said he's doing things at the line of scrimmage that you just don't expect seventeen-year-olds to do, like flip protections. He said NFL quarterbacks some don't do that, can't do it. He's flipping protections. The thing about these guys, Dylan and Daniel, is they're really smart guys. They're exceptionally intelligent. I've covered the program for 30 years. Not every quarterback's the same. They're not all, they're not all super intelligent. That, but these guys are both, they're precocious. If you watch, if you talk to them at all, and I've talked to Dylan quite a bit because I was in Hawaii with him. That's right. And he's precocious. I mean, he's he doesn't seem like he's a seventeen year old. It's like you're it, it, at, at all. Daniel Kalen, same way. So that's heartening because you 
it's heartening because this is tough for a freshman to take over a football team. A freshman. A freshman. The quarterback, we expect the quarterback to take over the team. This is a freshman, however, that's uh, drawn the interest and also was committed to Ohio State and Georgia. Big, <laughs> massive programs. Okay? So you think he, but I don't he think gets the pressure and these, he the, does, the awareness there. He does, but I don't think Ryan Day or Kirby Smart was saying to Dylan, you're taking over our program. I mean, right? No, but they also know there's a lot of, a lot of attention on their programs. And so I, I don't think that uh, – I'm, I'm not surprised to hear he's, he's mature for his age. People want more football to be. People want more football talk. Um, Sean Callahan. Sean writes today um, – hold on. There's a name we have to emphasize. There's a name we have to emphasize. Sean writes, after seven spring practices, what is a new development? He says a development is keep your eyes on Ja'Cory Barney and Isaiah Nayor. He says that Nayor had his best practice yet on Tuesday, and I saw some of that. Yeah, Nayor looked good. Uh, Ja'Cory Barney is a freshman from Mi- the Miami area. Yes. Um, electrifying, apparently. Michael Severe, a longtime media member here. Well, not I mean, he's a he's a he's an old. He hasn't been here forever, but he's an old like me. And he he tweeted about Barney. Ja'Cory Barney is it looks like he will remain in the thick of the receiver discussion. Don't know that he'd be a starter. Maybe he would be, but you can start to figure out already that like the kind of the top five or six receivers. It's becoming pretty clear. Banks is one, and Nayor's one, and Jalen Lloyd is one, and it looks like Barney is one. Jaden Doss has to be in that conversation. Uh, so three out of five are newcomers to Nebraska. Again, they addressed the position of need badly in this offseason. Two transfers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't mention freshman. Yeah, right. I didn't mention Malachi because he's he's not practicing full go he's in a green jersey he was doing pat and goes the other day and boy he looks good i mean he's uh malachi if he if if there's if he can find the fire he's he's gonna be a um a, a, he can be a monster he looks so good just catching balls over his shoulder and pat and go but you know what now he's in a room that th- there's a lot of competition it's serious competition i didn't mention david davon hall he's in that i don't think He's probably made an impact as much as Ja'Cory Barney through seven practices, but he made a big catch the other day. They have some – now that now that room looks like it should. It, it looks like it should. I'm not saying it's like – it's not like Ohio State around here, but it, it looks like it should. now. Well, there you go. So now – More you, football you, talk you later. Know, you know what to ask Matt Rule today. We'll play the sound of your question, too, on these airwaves tomorrow. I will ask the question. Will you? Well, do you think I should? I think you should. It's not. He, Are you he, seeing separation? Any separation? It's a at harmless all? question. Well, it, you established that it might not be harmless. He can answer it in a harmless way. It is harmless in general, but I, like I said, he can't really win with the response right. if he goes a certain direction. But I think Matt Rule is smart, and he will he's know how very, to answer that question. He's very to dodge that bullet. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something about Rule. He's quick on his feet. About as you know, guys that are like that. Oh yeah. He's about as quick on his feet as you'll ever find. So we'll have Matt Rule audio tomorrow. He speaks today after practice. When we come back, I've got a master's question for you, casual golf fans, next on Early Break on the Ticket. You're listening to Early Break with Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes in the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. NIPCO is hiring CDL drivers for ready-mixed concrete, Husker concrete, and Beatrice concrete. NEBCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. 
Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From Nebco's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit nebcoinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. Gainet Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gainet Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gainet Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gainet Trucking. Learn more and apply today at gainatrucking.com. The need in our community if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer, usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top-shelf liquor to crowd-favorite beer, Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Brown's carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. It's officially one of the greatest weeks of the year on the sports calendar, Masters Week. Book your tee time today with friends, family, or coworkers at Double Eagle Golf inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Doors open at 10 a.m. from Thursday to Sunday, and they'll have food directly from Augusta National, like pimento cheese sandwiches, Georgia pecan caramel popcorn, and lots more, plus specialty drinks to get you in the mood for the greatest golf tournament in the world. Book a bay today at doubleeagle.golf. Hockey season is winding down for the Lincoln Stars. Our final home game is Friday, April 12th, as we take on the Sioux City Musketeers at 7.05 at the Icebox. It's fandomonium all night long as we salute our great fans with prizes throughout the game. Don't miss out on your last chance to catch the Stars take the ice this regular season. Purchase your tickets now at lincolnstars.com. This, I'm not on drugs, I'm not drunk, <laughs> is Early Break with Sip and Jay. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. <laughs> Weekday mornings from 6 to 8 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. I'll get to a question I have regarding the Masters and the casual golf fan in one second. Before that, though, Sip, our second segment, always sponsored by 
our friends over at Bex Hybrids who gave you that nice full zip jacket. Where's it at? It's right. It's you brought uh, it today. Yeah, you wore I it wear today? it. I told you I'm gonna wear it every day. Every day. Every day. The yeah, it is nice. Bex Hybrids, the largest independent family-owned seed company in the USA. Founded in 1937, Bex Hybrids provides unrivaled customer service and product diversity for both corn and soybeans. A company founded on the three Fs, faith, family, and farming. To find your nearest Bex Hybrids rep, head over to BexHybrids.com. And maybe you just see Sonny Beck probably walk through. It could happen. It could freak you right out. It could happen. Sonny Beck is the man. He's the man in charge. He gave you that nice bag that you have. Yep. And Bill has the bag. Uh, the, the bag, bag is... Where's uh, your bag at? It is in my kitchen. It is a uh, canvas bag with handles. It looks like a bag that you would see an old-timey doctor with walk, do, making his old-timey rounds. Old-timey doctor. Making his rounds through a, a town. Um, but it, 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 a doctor could use it because it's handsome. It is handsome. Um, and I appreciate that bag. It's I, almost I, like a mustard color, right? Would you give it a mustard yeah. color? I wonder, now I'm thinking out loud, you've seen the bag. You know me well enough. Like just a weekend road trip to cover a Big Ten game. Can take I just it. take that bag? Take it. Just take that bag. Take and the bag. Take my computer in my book bag, we'll yep. call it. Sure. And then use that bag. Just fold up a just fold up a shirt like this. Simple as that. Yeah. That's it. I, I might be doing that. It's a do-everything bag. Yeah, it's a do-everything bag. So take it to oh, I a think road we got trip. Something we got something. How easy would that be? Your new travel bag. Carry on. Courtesy of Bex and Sunny. God bless Sunny. Bexhybrids.com. 402-464-5685. Call or text as always. I already played the twinkly music from the Masters because that's <laughs> happening today. <laughs> Why'd you have to do that? It's, it, it's labeled as Masters Twinkly Music on the Twinkly Music. The twinkly piano. Listen to that. Listen here. Hang on. This is Twinkly. And that's, that's it's a proper term. Let's see what it sounds like right here. See? Hmm. Some, good. Hmm. There's the keys. Twinkly. Yeah. Twinkly in a positive Twinkly. way. It's a positive term. Twinkly. It's very soothing. If you can't get soothed by that sound, Would there's you something wrong down? with you. Keep your voice down. Sorry. If you can't get soothed by this music, there's something seriously wrong with you. Over to 17. Who are you picking for this? Are you picking the favorite, Scotty Scheffler? It's, it's, <laughs> music, it's Scheffler. You say Scotty Scheffler. <laughs> Scotty Scheffler. I had to stop the music because you said the name wrong. Are you picking Scotty Scheffler? Like saying, like, uh, Rory McIntosh. I saw, I saw that Scheffler. I saw that Scotty Scheffler has 13 to 4 odds. I'm taking Scotty. He's right. already won a couple big tournaments this year. What about the defending champ, John Rahm? John Rahm has a very good chance to win. He does. A live golfer now is John Rahm. I read that in the field, it's the deepest field of talent maybe ever. There are 33 former major winners. Is that right? How about that for stat? 33. Would you keep your voice down? The music's not playing anymore. Thirty-three former champions in the field. <laughs> it's a deep and talented field. <laughs> you... I can't. I can't do this. I can't do this. Why not? Who are you picking? Are you picking, picking Scheffler? Scotty Scheffler? That's the everybody's pick. Listen, Can't you pick somebody that's I'm a little off? I'm picking the favorite the... because the favorite is the best golfer in the world right now. Could I? Sh could I sh sell you Chris Kirk? No. No, you cannot sell me Chris Kirk. I like Chris Kirk. He's a good regular tour player, but when the lights are bright, as in Augusta National, Chris Kirk will not be there at the end of the day. Who would you pick as a long shot? I haven't thought about the long shot yet. Because you have a child around. Because I have a child. Because I've been thinking about the favorite the whole time, <laughs> Scotty Scheffler. It would not be, I'm not taking Rory McIlroy. He struggles at Augusta, although he finished second a couple years ago because he had like a great Sunday. Ask your question from the rundown. The question is this, as we lower the music here. All right. The question is this. We can't, I, like I can't it. do that the whole time. <laughs> Distracting. I love that music. All right. So SIP is the definition of uh, not even probably a casual golf fan. but I don't a, like it when you put labels on me, but go ahead. You, would you label yourself as more than a casual yes, golf fan? Yes, I, I, I would say I'm a casual golf fan. 
You you said how you describe you, a casual golf fan? I know the, the game. You and said Scotty Schieffler for the top person in the world. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you're a very casual golf fan. <laughs> Just number say one it. Player in the world. He's the top. He's won all right several big tournaments wrong. this year. Yeah, he's won majors yeah. already. Okay, Scotty Scheffler. Scheffler. Okay, the question I have for you and others that are maybe casual golf fans like yourself is: Does the casual golf fan watch the Masters with Tiger Woods being mostly a non-factor? Tiger Woods is going to play. Question. He will not be somebody that is you know likely there at the end. Now he won it five years ago. That was a great story for golf. A great story for sports in general. But he has played just so little golf in terms of tournament play the last couple of years with injuries, aging, all this stuff's happening at Tiger. It would be, frankly, a major surprise if he is a contender at all in Augusta. So that's what I'm asking. Does the casual fan watch the Masters with Tiger Woods being mostly a non fan I'm going to answer it this way. I think the casual sports fan does at least take a peek at the Masters, and I think there's a lot of casual sports fans that would just keep that the Masters on their TV this weekend. Just keep it on. It's, it's a wonderful background. Right. Mm -hmm. It is. It's wonderful. So, and and I would tell you this, Jake, I will have it on. What day? Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. I will be writing on Saturday. And it's like, I I like to have good background. You know what I find is good background when you're writing is baseball. It's not distracting. No, it's not. Um, Golf is not distracting. So yeah, I think most, I'm just going to, I'm not going to say casual golf. fan. I'll just say, even casual sports fans will have it on. There's been too many masters in the past that have been interrupted by Nebraska spring games. That's not the case this year. It's April 27th. So there's no interruption of the spring game for the masters. You you could watch the Saturday and not have to worry about writing or or watching the game. It'd be wonderful. Right. And I would encourage you to follow through with that commitment to having the masters on Saturday. Yeah, I would encourage, I would encourage that. Okay. And my my bad on Scheffler's name. Yeah. I was reading, I was doing some studying last night. I don't know why I came out with Schieffler. Chef. That's pretty bad. Yeah. I'm interested. Um, why? So you don't, you think Rom's, does Rom have a, oh, Rom's Rom got a great chance. Yeah. yeah he's he's got a great top chance. five chances. Yeah. He's a great player. Still playing good golf. This is a course where if you're, if you're good on it, I don't know how I'm going to botch this. You, I think this there's some courses where you would look at past performance as a factor more than others, right? Yes. And this would be one that's high end. I would agree with that. Yeah. If if you've performed well on this course before, that's a factor you would weight more heavily than you would with some other courses. Mm-hmm. It's and I don't know. I agree with that. I don't know exactly why that is, but um, course familiarity. <laughs> yes, and it's a it's always a factor, right? You would look at that. And in a lot of occasions, but I think this occasion, it's it's more relevant. A couple of texts before we get, get to break. Please. Rick Heyman. Rick Heyman's waiting for us, by the way. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> Gator goes back to when he joined the show with the music playing. He says, I joined at a weird time, but I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I think we should talk in hushed tones when we talk about. I would propose, and you were, you were stiff-arming this notion, that if we're talking about the masters at all, we're talking in hushed tones. Well, I have the music to always play for it, so it's fine. It, that works with that. Uh, let's see. Someone says, I didn't watch the Masters with Tiger Woods. I will not watch it now. Okay. Well, well now, I don't, why is that? that Kyle from Eagle, by the way. Okay, Kyle. Uh, Jake hates me. says, golf sucks and nobody cares. That's just not true. That's just not <laughs> true. Wait a second. Who wrote that? Jake hates me is the name of that texture. As in me. Hates him. I don't hate you. I, despise, I don't like that take, though. Uh, golf is the worst. That's not true. <laughs> We got some anti Too ripped to quit says, Schieffler, Graham, shut up, Sipple. <laughs> All right. One more says, uh, I can't uh, shut up. This is from uh, Bill. Bill says, casual golf fan here. Yes, I absolutely will watch the Masters, especially on Sunday afternoon, even if Tiger is not involved. Bill Bush. Bill Bush. Will not be watching the Masters. <laughs> you don't think so? No. No. Is he not? Bill is not a Bill does not like playing golf and he doesn't really like golf in general. He's yeah. made that very clear. That, oh, he's, he's made it clear that golf has no redeeming value to him as far as playing it. He just doesn't understand the appeal at I all. I texted Bill the other day. I was playing golf and I said, Bill, I, get, I need to get you out to the golf course. He says, I'd rather eat tin foil. Yeah. Yeah. Like, really? Let's put that to the it. test. Here's golf and here's tin foil. Yeah, eat he that tin foil. I still think we got to get to. 
the par three course, Ager. That's 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 a for sure. Yeah, it's a given. So Masters today again uh, delayed because of us of some weather, but it should be starting at some point late morning or, or early afternoon. That is bad news for Augusta. Good news for this show because you will not be distracted. Today. You get distracted. They, they don't. They don't start playing until after the show's over in general, anyways. Are, really? It, it, oh, it, so we're talking about the British Open. The, now, British Open. Yeah, yeah I'm just. Yeah, you're distracted. Big, yeah, you barely I'm, should I'm, be doing I'm the show. Even here. Right. Yeah, British, British Open. Open. Pretty fine. Right, British Open. When we come back, Rick Heyman's song of the day on early break on the ticket. You're listening to Early Break with Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Community means something different to everyone. But for me, it means cheering on those around you during the good times and helping them out during the tough times. I'm softball player Jordy Ball, and I've been blessed with the support of my friends, family, coaches, and community throughout my life. When looking for a bank to call home, it was easy to choose Midwest Bank. I never feel like just another customer, and they're proud to support their communities. They love what they do, and it shows. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Ballard. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why as your senator, I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. It's officially one of the greatest weeks of the year on the sports calendar, Masters Week. Book your tee time today with friends, family, or coworkers at Double Eagle Golf inside the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Doors open at 10 a.m. from Thursday to Sunday, and they'll have food directly from Augusta National, like pimento cheese sandwiches, Georgia pecan caramel popcorn, and lots more. Plus specialty drinks to get you in the mood for the greatest golf tournament in the world. Book a bay today at doubleeagle.golf. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. Buckle up and hang on. This is going to be a good one. The fans of Kansas Speedway know how to have a good time. One that celebrates fantastic finishes and family-friendly facilities. Trading paint. We've got beauty. And tailgating tradition. Burnouts, beer, and barbecue. Oh, it'll for sure be a good time. And you are all invited. NASCAR weekend at Kansas Speedway, May 4th and 5th. Get your tickets now at kansasspeedway.com. Grab a free burger and beer at L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game tailgate. Meet the L.A. Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th. L.A. Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. Several irrigation contractors in Lincoln go out of business every year, leaving sprinkler system orphans begging for service. The folks at Judson Irrigation shed a tear for these little fellas. They've been coddling these orphans for more than 40 years. From redesign, repairing, replacing, and restoring, remember the Judson Irrigation Orphanage. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. The Omaha Supernovas are back in action this Saturday, April 13th, versus the Atlanta Vibe at Gas South Arena in Atlanta. The Mullen Motors pregame show with Derek Pearson and Renee Saunders starts at 5 p.m. with first serve at 6. Make sure to tune in to the next Ag Appraisal Realty postgame show right after the match ends. Catch all the action on your flagship station, 93.7 The Ticket, and statewide on the Supernovas Radio Network.
Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 1501 Center Park Road. Get rid of pesky critters once and for all with Bats to Rats. Their expert team is here to help you reclaim your home. No more sleepless nights caused by crawling critters or flapping wings. Bats to Rats ensures a safe environment for every family member. Check the website at BatsToRats.com for amazing offers. And if you mention this ad, you'll receive $10 off your initial inspection cost. Call Bats to Rats today at 402-781-8691. That's 402-781-8691. Bats to Rats. Move over, Jake. I'm moving. Jeez. Thursdays are reserved for a man with a wider range of music knowledge than Jake could ever dream of. This is the golden era. And you would hear this on any radio station. You know, it wasn't like it is now. You know, you got country, you got R&B, you got pop, you got rap, you got rock. They didn't have that then. You heard everything. A man who knows a good song when he hears it, just as much as a good diamond when he sees it. You get a diamond! Yes, I do get Brilliant. a diamond, I get a diamond, and that makes me happy. <laughs> it's time for Rick Heyman's Song of the Day. Sponsored by Sarter Heyman Jewelers. On early break. On 93.7 The Ticket. Once again, your song of the day, Life in the Fast Lane by the Eagles, 464-5685. One is bad, 10 is good. Texture rating on Rick Heyman's Sauter Heyman Jewelers song of the day. Rick Heyman joins us. Rick occasionally will pop up like this stuff. Monster home run. That was a sharp single to left. Okay. He, he got the barrel of the bat he's on, on He's it. on base, though. Yeah, he got the barrel of the bat on it. Got the barrel out front. Whipped it into left. Um, the song is solid. It's a solid song. It's a solid single to left. It is a 7.6467. 7.6467. I will go below that. I, I, I like it. I don't love it. Um, I would say the single to left is probably a good description of that. Got his bat around. I'm going to go 6.7. On okay. it, I I would switch the station probably on that song. Oh, what? What? Whoa. I like no. I love the Eagles. That song does not do a lot for me. But I don't. Like you can't give our Eagle score a, a song a bad score though because it's so well done. Generally not. You can't. Right. So for me, it, you know, an average Eagle song is six point seven, which is still a very good score. Josh didn't seem overly moved by the song. However, he is like a psychophant. To Rick Heyman, so he gave <laughs> he gave it. Uh, as I, did I pronounce that word right? I, I don't know. I think so. Sounds um right. So I I think he gave it a six eight. I'm gonna go a seven five for Josh. Five point two, not bad for the Eagles. He's Ooh, not. Oh, he does not. That's right. He does not like the Eagles. Remember that? He said he does not yeah. like the Eagles. It's a strange personality quirk he has. Josh is out on the Eagles. Yeah. We are now joined by Rick Heyman, Sarah Heyman, Julius. Rick, good morning. Song of the day: Life in the Fast Lane for the Eagles. We gave him some decent Life. scores. <clears throat> What'd Josh give it? 5.2. Oh, God, you guys. <laughs> I gave you a high score, Rick. You're not a big Eagles fan, Josh. 
I know. He w- hey, we need to talk really quiet today. <laughs> yes. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we hear you loud and we, clear. We, we, we hear you, Masters. Let's, we hear let's, you. let's go over to the 17. <laughs> um, hey, hey no, I, seriously, happy, yeah. happy Masters. Last year, mm. that was a year ago, we went out to <clears throat> Double Eagle Golf that morning, remember? Yes, we did. Yes. We all met up and. Sip was drinking um, Bloody Marys or something. <laughs> he, had, he had a Bloody Mary. I did. Six in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that was it's the good. proper time for it, right? Yeah, 100. Well, there's rules here. Hey, yeah, we miss, um, we miss the third leg of the stool. I love the new T-shirt, the three-legged stool. Mm-hmm. It is nice. I uh, saw that on, on Facebook. Uh, it, a two-legged stool would be considered a bench. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it would, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you guys are the solid bench, and uh, you know I'll be the pretend three leg, third leg today. Okay, uh, Rick. It's only been five or six years I've been doing this. I don't know. You know, I, I guess I deserve a third leg once in a while. Yes, sure. you do. Yes, you do, Rick. You one hundred percent do. Okay, so Masters Week, fabulous. Uh, it's fun to watch the coverage because they don't know what to do with the live tour guys and <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, it's, it's 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 just really interesting um how they're covering this this year it's, I've, I've watched some of it it's been it's been pretty good so we're in <laughs> 70s killer songs we might have a little bit of 80s slipping in here as well but uh yeah life in the fast lane that guitar riff which you have want to do cutting off the intro, although they did play. There's time restraints here, Rick. Come on, man. I can't play for four you know, minutes. I'll get sued. You know, what's amazing is most of these songs, the intro is everything. And for whatever reason, Jake cuts them off every time. I don't, I don't get it. But uh, yeah. Because it, it, there's sometimes there's too many intros, Rick, and I don't get any of the song in. Yeah, That's but, why. Nobody, but nobody really cares about the, the lyrics so much. It's the intro, you know? Hmm. It's, you know, so anyway. Well, listen, this song describes a man and a woman who had everything but lost it because of their lifestyles. Now, you got to remember, this is Hotel California album time the eagles were a completely different band before this record they were a little uh country foursome that had some great pop slash country singles they were um uh, had great harmonies great songwriting but they were they were uh they were linda ronstadt's band okay okay, okay. That's who they. That's who they were. They were literally Linda Ronstadt's band. That's how they got started. So they were a country band, and at this point, uh, or right before this, they picked up another guitar player. We'll talk about him in a minute, uh, and Joe Walsh. And so this was a three guitar lineup, three electric guitar lineup in the front, and they went to the to the hard edge okay so hotel california the entire record even though there's beautiful ballads and things like that on the record it's it's really a rock and roll record and this was and they specifically said that was their goal was their going to the harder edge Mm. um at that point um but basically this song is about um a couple who had lost their lifestyles due to the fast lane in California at that time. And this was late 70s, mid to late 70s. Of course, cocaine was really making its way in, um, which completely changed Hollywood, and you can see it to this day. Um, It was a stereotype of running around in your Porsche 24 hours a day, partying, uh, having lots of money, lots of drugs, lots of parties. Um, But Joe Walsh actually... to me, this is how old I am. Joe Walsh is the new guy in the Eagles because <clears throat> I knew Joe Walsh long before the Eagles and loved his stuff. He wrote that riff, that nice rendition that, there, Rick. Was, that was a guitar riff that he used to practice to keep his fingers loose um, mm. and and play most of the notes that he needed to play in the upcoming gig that night. And 
uh, uh, John Hanley heard him playing it, and he goes, what is that? And he goes, that's my practice riff. And he said, don't forget that. We need to record it. That is a song. Wow. So then they went on to uh, come up with the lyrics and so forth, and Hotel California actually became a theme-developed album all about California lifestyle, um, which Joe Walsh and Henley and Fry were no strangers to, I might add. These guys were some of the most hard-partying dudes in the history of Hollywood. Um, and if you've ever seen the documentary about the Eagles, it lays it all out, and boy, is that... a if you've even seen it, I'm going to go watch it again this weekend in between golf because that's how great that documentary is. Where, where do you find this documentary? I'm sorry. Um, it's everywhere. I watched it, I think, on YouTube okay. one time. YouTube. Go, go look it up. The, the Eagles, it's a full documentary okay. Okay. about all their fighting and all their drugs and all the songs. And I mean, they all hated each other's guts. And wow. it was just an incredible, crazy band. Wow. And to see them live, have you ever seen them live? They were the boringest band. Right. I mean, boring. Is that right? Except for Walsh, who, of course, is a wonderful entertainer. But, yeah, they just stand there. They're super boring, but incredibly talented. So, hmm. uh, again, 70s killer songs and 80s. Uh, Dave Loggins wrote the theme to the Masters, the Twinkly song. He did not. What? That's Dave awesome. Loggins, not Kenny Loggins, oh. Dave Loggins, wrote the theme song to the Masters when he went to visit there in 1981, oh. and it just came to him. He took it to CBS, and he said, I've got a song for the Masters. Would you like a song? And Shakurnian, or whatever his name was back then that was ahead of the whole thing, said, you, you just wrote a winner there. And there are lyrics to that song. That is a full song. I'll have to find uh, that sometime. So look it up. Okay, with that in mind, stump the sippers. Here we go, here we go. At this time, there was a three-guitar lineup of the e in the Eagles. Now, this you may probably will never get, but it's, it's interesting. The three-guitar lineup included Joe Walsh, Glenn Fry, R.I.P., who has been gone for eight years? That 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 doesn't sound right. I think wow, he passed. Eight years. I think it's sooner than that. And who was the third guitarist in the Eagles? Okay, so you named Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh Glenn, I Glenn should know Fry. this. I you, I think we've done this before. Um, he also had. He also. I think the person would be lead vocals every so often. Um, and he might be, he might have a ranch in Western Nebraska, actually. Um, and I can't say his name, even though when you say it, I'll, I'll be very frustrated. Go ahead. I don't have it. Well, that, okay. You get a CZ. Yes. No, you're speaking of Randy Mice. I am speaking. The bass player. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Bass player with a super high voice. You can hear him singing on that song, by the way. Oh. It would, the answer is Don Felder. Oh, don't know the name. Know the name. Don, I wouldn't Felder. Have Don Felder was the third wheel, although he was the one that wrote Hotel California. Hmm. Uh, and Jeez. then he left. They threw him out of the band because Glenn, uh, uh, Glenn Fry and him hated each other's guts, and he went on to become one of the largest commercial real estate tycoons in Los Angeles history. He's still playing, though. He's out touring. Don, Don Felder. Felder. I'll be okay. What's the up Masters, next? The mas this is for Jake. Okay. The Masters theme song, Dave Loggins. Yeah. What other famous song, very famous song, hit did he? Dave Loggins, right? <laughs> that's a, that's I have a, a big guess. question. I have a guess. If, just I need guess. a lifeline here. Your mama don't okay, dance. Lifeline. Your mama don't dance. Your daddy don't rock and roll. Two CZs. That was Kenny Loggins. <laughs> you got the last name right. What, what was the song, Rick? Please come to Boston. Oh, oh I, I know that song. Yeah, I yeah. Number I would, one fan of the man from Tennessee. Yeah, that's a hush tone song. I would not have got that right, but I, I do know that song. Okay. I know that song. And a bon and a bonus question: 
Did he make more one. or less than ten thousand dollars for writing the theme song to the Masters? Less. <laughs> Less. Three thousand dollars. You get a dime. What a joke. Brilliant. Three grand. Three grand. Three grand. That's a joke. Three that, grand. That, that's what that they joke. paid him. Well, Last question: Have the Eagles won more or less than ten Grammy awards? I'll go above that. Yes, we we'll both go more. Uh, you get CZ's eighteen nominees, <laughs> six Grammys. No, six. Six Grammys. Well, not a great performance today for us, Rick. What's going on right now at Sardar Heyman Jewelers? Hey, like I said. The outlet, I think I said, is down the street, 12th and 0. You're at 11th and 0. Get your coffee, get whatever. Go see the boys. Come over to Sarder Heyman. The outlet, 12th and 0. We have a brand new Facebook page my daughter Jordan's been developing. Go check it out on Facebook just for the outlet. We bought a haul yesterday of beautiful designer items that are out of an estate. Uh, this stuff is going to be, it's going to go quick, and it is top, high end. It'll all be highly discounted. Remember, at the outlet, up to 70% off every day, at least 30% off. Breakers, if you come in on any regular merchandise, you mention the show, Breakers, the immediate 10% off. They'll call me wherever I'm at, and I'll make sure they get it. Uh, check us out at... Uh, SarderHeyman.com. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. I recorded a new video a couple of days ago. Rick's picks from the outlet. That'll be on our Facebook. Uh, check out our Heartland Diamonds. They're incredible. The most beautiful diamond in the world. If not, we'll give you a free pair of dollar store readers to make sure you can see. Check us out, Sarder <laughs> Heyman. Facebook, Instagram. And always, I will post more interesting things about this incredible band. All the intertwinings of this, Dave Loggins, you name it, all of it on my personal Facebook, at Rick Heyman. Rick, always good stuff. Thanks for the time. We'll chat with you again next week. Bye-bye. That's uh, Rick Heyman's song of the day, Life in the Fast Lane by the Eagles today. That's his song. When we Rick. come back, top of the hour, Mike Schaefer, for the first time in like two months. Mike Schaefer From 24-7 Sports. Yes, yes, he's on the phone, though, not in person, on okay. the phone. He returns. On early break on the ticket. home for sports talk on the fm dial also online at the ticketfm.com on the internet kntk fm for 93 7 the ticket you're listening to early break with steve simple jake Sorensen, and bill bush on 93 7 the ticket and the ticketfm.com this is Coach Bill Bush. You all know my passion for Nebraska. Having coached all over the country, I can honestly say there is no place like Nebraska. You know where there's also no place like? Midwest Bank. Midwest Bank has proudly served Nebraska for over 70 years, and they're located in nine different communities. Midwest Bank is ready, willing, and able to meet all your personal, business, and agriculture needs. Your community, your bank, and mine, Midwest Bank. Find out more at Midwest Bank. Member F-D-I-C. Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozin. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband Reggie and I are local family business owners and actively involved in our community. Last year, I voted for the largest property tax relief package in Nebraska history. Property tax relief is important to every family, and I will continue to deliver more property tax relief to working families. This is Carolyn Bozin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Bozin for Legislature. Go hog wild pit barbecue. If the week's been too hectic to even think about dinner, or your family can't handle one more night of leftovers, then it's time to let Hog Wild do the cooking. Hog Wild's family packs are one heck of a good deal for a complete barbecue meal loaded with all the smoked meats, tasty sides, buns, and sauces you need to feed your family. Order online at GoHogWild.com. Hog Wild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we close at 8. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. 
For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. Perch Merch is your one-stop shop for all your printing and promotional needs in Lincoln, Nebraska. They specialize in screen printing, embroidery, vehicle wraps, window wraps, print collateral, promotional products, and signage. At Perch Merch, they are committed to delivering high-quality products and exceptional customer service. Their experienced team of designers and printing professionals will work with you every step of the way to ensure that your vision is realized. Call for a quote today at 402-217-5212 or go to perch-merch.com. Jake Sorensen here for The Body Shop. My wife is nearing her due date with our first child and has been in need of a good massage as her body continues to change and adapt. Dennis and the team at The Body Shop were incredible with the prenatal massage that she's still talking about today. I was also able to get a deep tissue massage, so it was a great body experience and a unique couple's massage in general. If you're in need of stress relief, book a massage today at thebodyshoplincoln.com, The Body Shop at 48th and A. Liberty Law Group is committed to the defense of your liberty and pursuit of your justice for those that have been injured. My name is Seth Morris, attorney with Liberty Law Group. If you've been injured in an accident that wasn't your fault, call 877-42-LIBERTY. Our relentless trial attorneys are committed to the highest quality legal representation. At Liberty Law Group, we will fight for you. Call 877-42-LIBERTY. Again, that's 877-42-LIBERTY. Hey, Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Grab a free burger and beer at LA Power Sports of Lincoln on April 27th during their Husker Spring Game Tailgate. Meet the LA Power Sports team, play some tailgate games with them, and enter for a chance to win an official John Elway autographed football. Check out their huge selection of boats and watercraft for the summer, along with hundreds of motorcycles, ATVs, and side-by-sides from all the major brands. Stop out and watch the game with them on April 27th at Way Power Sports of Lincoln, 27th and I-80. They'll be tailgating all day. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. It doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 70th and Van Doren. God bless you. Wake up, Lincoln. I overslept. Damn rooster didn't crow. It's time for Early Break. Sponsored by Midwest Bank. Live from Lincoln, America. Here's 93.7 at tickets, Jake Sorensen. I'm wrong, but I'm not. Husker Online, Steve Sippel. If I were a feral cat. And longtime college football assistant coach, Bill Bush. You get one team. Mine's the Houston Oilers. I'm, so, not, I'm not the Texans, and I'm not the Titans, so, so I'm out. out. This is Early Break. <laughs> Welcome back to Hour 2 on a Masters Thursday. Steve Sippel, Jake Sorens in early break. Bill Bush out today. He's back on Monday. We missed Bill. He texted us. He texted a rating. He texted 4.4 for Rick Heyman's song today. Oh, my God. He... 4.4. 4. <laughs> 4. I didn't 4. see that. Yep, Bill. 4.4. 4. That's low. I gave it a 6-something. You gave it a 7-something. Yeah, Bill, that's low. Would I have guessed that from Bill on that song? I would. Maybe. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not like the most energetic song. I, I would say five for Bill, but we went four four, so it's about right. It's about right. Bill's interesting. I mean, there's some like he's he's out on petty, I, and that, that saddens me. By the way, don't be saddened by it, that. No, it's because you and I, story. you and I both love Tom Petty. I right. played a lot of Tom Petty in these airwaves. We had a lot of talks about Tom Petty over the years. Yeah, Bill's got an interesting kind of interesting taste. In music, 
He does. It's good. We do it's, miss Bill. We do miss Bill. He'll be he, back he'll here be back Monday. Monday. He's back Monday. He's just gone temporarily. We'll have Monday. coffee talk on Monday. We will have coffee talk. Yeah. By the way, hour two sponsored by our friends at Midwest Bank. Member FDIC location in South Lincoln at 27th and Jamie Lane now also open at 70th in Pioneers. As I said yesterday, Steve Schindler off to this week also because he's he's planning with Bill for next week's activities. Oh, is that what's going on? Shin Daddy's, you know, he's just he's taking the week off with Bill. They're pl- they're planning next week. Yeah, they're getting all stuff stuff you know planned for the the bank for the bank and Creighton, right? And in the northern. I, part I would assume of the that state. Steve Schindler's also watching the Masters today. Probably, I suppose he's a decent man. You assume everybody is because they should. You, you've dubbed this Masters Thursday. It is Masters Thursday. That, that's that is proper. I That's guess. Proper. All right. We have a well, special guest. For the, fir- for the first time in at least like two months, we are joined now by our friend, our Thursday guest, Mike Schaefer, 24-7 Sports. Schaefer, good morning. It's great to have you. Would you be okay with me dubbing this as Masters Thursday? Okay. Uh, say that again. I didn't catch the very end of that. Okay. So would I be okay if what if, happened? If we, are, <laughs> if, if we are dubbing today as Masters Thursday, SIP has a problem oh. with that apparently. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean that's that's okay. I was I was like, what did I just hear? Sorry, that's I, okay. I don't know. Sorry, that's I'm still catching up on sleep for the last two months. That's yeah, okay, Shaver. Which which we sh- I, I hope you don't mind me doing this. I just I haven't congratulated Mike on the recent addition to the family, um, Hudson. 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 It, and so congratulations, Michael. I never texted you. I I did I did it purposely because I wanted to do this on air. Hudson oh, I is, appreciate that. Now I can cross your name off the list of people who have yet to congratulate. <laughs> but, uh, there's still about 16 people left. They know who they are. They're going to stay on that list until I get that congratulations. Hudson is a is an incredible name. It is a great name. Jake had it on the rundown. I was like, oh, God, that's a good one. Hudson. 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 James Schaefer. Yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a name right there, Schaefer. That is you a, nailed it. Yeah, you nailed You stuck the name. Good job. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Well, we're curious, Schaefer, in terms of, I know we know you've been busy the last couple months, obviously, with Hudson and the duties of being a new, a new father. But in general, as spring football is rolling on, I'm, I'm curious, Schaefer, how how, uh, how, locked in, have you, how locked in have you been into practice as well as into recruiting the last couple months for Nebraska football? Well, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it hasn't, uh, it hasn't been the easiest to just, seamlessly dive back into all of it. But, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, this might surprise you guys, there's a fair amount of media that covers Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and even the spring, which, you know, isn't the most important thing in the world, but we cover it like it is. It is relatively easy for me to, to follow what's going on. Uh, and it is a, it's a pretty fascinating spring in its own right with the freshman quarterbacks. You have Heinrich Harburg there. You have all of that going on. Uh, you know, we're in our, what, 10th straight year of Nebraska not really having a running back. Mm. And so we get to have that <laughs> wow. conversation right. um, throughout the spring. And so, uh, you know, there's, there's that. The, the wide receiver situation is fascinating to me as well because I think they have so many unique options and it just goes a lot deeper um, than it did last year. I think that's a position that definitely feels like it's going to make a jump in a really good way. And then we spent a lot of time in previous years talking about the offensive line and the defensive line. And quietly, those are probably your pillars of your yeah. team going into to 2024, which is exactly how you want it most years. And so it's, you know, when you, when you get a chance to kind of wade back into it and you look at it, and you can see how the foundation of the roster has kind of been built uh, in a way that they can move forward and, and build off of last year's success and, and put themselves in a position uh, to, to move forward as a program, which is what you want. And I think the spring has kind of played out that way, too. Michael Schaefer joins us from 24-7 Sports, Nebraska. And you covered, so you covered the recruitment of Ja'Cory Barney to a certain extent. Ja'Cory Barney, Mike, I, and it's just, I didn't know that Ja'Cory Barney would arrive on the scene and make this sort of buzz this early did you anticipate that and what what is your recollection of the jacory barney recruiting process yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna toot my own horn here he was number two for me on the super six i actually thought you know outside of dylan riola he was the second most fascinating early enrollee Hmm. um, because of what he could provide and so the reason i was excited about jacory barney 
because he was one of those guys that was asked to do everything in high school. I mean, okay. he played wide receiver, kick returner, defensive back, quarterback, running back. Um, you know, I'm sure they had other ways that they utilized him as well. But the idea is someone like that with that much talent, they just to focus on just one position uh, and really kind of gets to hone in and, and, you know, apply his craft in one way. I feel like those guys tend to to do really well when they, they get just locked in on something. And he was someone that throughout his recruiting process, I feel like Nebraska was a little bit on edge if they weren't going to be able to, to keep him. He silently committed uh, when he visited um, last June. I think he was the June 2nd official visitor. And his mom loved it. They fell in love with the place. And so he committed, but he wasn't going to announce it until a month later. Well, inside that month, he ends up going to this camp at Miami. Miami hadn't offered him. He's a Miami kid. And they hadn't offered him yet. He just blows up. Like, he's the best player at this camp that's full of future five stars. And he is dominating. So Miami offers. They get him on campus several times mm. uh, for visits. But in the background, Garrett McGuire is just going to work. And so Garrett McGuire did a really nice job recruiting uh, on Nebraska's behalf. Philip Simpson, when he was involved with Nebraska, was involved in that recruitment a lot, too. And I remember going into that decision on July 2nd. Like it was a real 50-50. Nobody in our network felt comfortable really even putting their name on anything. Wow. And, um, you know, it was, I, it was one of those rare recruitments where – it was a real wild card aspect to it, and I had gotten word Nebraska had closed the deal, and uh, they were able to do it. They got back to them, and it shocked a lot of people. And then they held it, and I think that's also, you know, um, Coach Bush can talk about this too. Getting the commitment is just half a battle. Holding the commitment then becomes the real part of it, and you go through the struggles that you did in the passing game last year, and Arizona gets back in the mix. Uh, Miami's in the mix. All these other teams still like them, but they were able to maintain and, and keep to Corey Barney. And I think it's really going to pay off, um, you know, as early as this year. In general, also, Schaefer, I mean, Nebraska's added Jamal Banks, Isaiah Nayer. Now, last last year was a struggle at receiver. There wasn't really any much, much, you know, much big plays. You had a couple, Malachi had a couple big plays, but in general, you didn't have reliable wide receivers. I mean, how different is that look this year to you with what you hear from what you've seen from practice and what you've seen with your own eyes from these guys? Yeah, I think it's exciting because you have Jamal Banks and Isaiah Nair who have both had good seasons in their career. Nair is a little bit more of a, of a wild card. You don't know exactly what you're going to get there because it's been a couple of years. I think 2021 was his big blow up. Uh, work Wyoming, 22, he had the injury, and then last year Texas was so loaded, it was it was pretty hard for him to see the field. But I think he provides a veteran presence that can help you. What I like, and I know we've talked about it on this show in the past, he's a bigger guy. I mean, I felt last year, you know, Billy Kemp, they, they liked him for what he was, they liked him for how he could help the room, but it's really hard to throw a slant pass to a five foot seven wide receiver in the Big Ten. Hey, Amen. I mean, I think when we watched him, in that Minnesota game, and I think it was Tyler Newbin that was on him uh, most of that game, or they just draped him with these bigger defensive backs. It just became apparent he wasn't going to get himself open. And they had a great plan to utilize him, I felt, uh, throughout most of last year. And so I think these receivers fit better with what they want to do. Obviously, you're going to change your passing game element if Dylan Raiola is the guy in there. He's got a little bit more of a accurate arms than what they were going to have with Heinrich Harburg. The strategy in passing changes. And then we also have guys like Demetrius Bell, who there's a lot of excitement for. Jaden Goss, who we didn't get to see enough of last year. Jalen Lloyd, who's I'm sure put in a ton of work in the offseason. You have Malachi Coleman and all that upside. And the rest of these freshmen. And then we have the tight end. I, the passing game is really fun to me. It's a big what if when you think about Nebraska for, for 2024. But they're in a much better situation than they were last year. Michael Schaefer joins us. Isn't it, isn't it interesting, this market, Michael? You mentioned Demetrius Bell. We are eight practices into spring, and he's yesterday's news because of the emergence of Corey Barney. This place is amazing. This place is remarkable. Well, you know, you know as well as anybody does that uh, the, spring, the spring cycle, you know, what was it? A couple of days ago, Maurice uh, Mazuka yeah. was was the top of the town yeah. as, as a potential running back in yeah. a position where you know being the guy in the spring hasn't really worked out for anybody in the fall. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but Demetrius Bell, though, I can't remember the situation entirely. I don't know that he would have been 
academically eligible to play last year. Right. So I think it was a situation where he was tearing it up on scout teams. And I know uh, Brian Christopherson and Michael Brunts were collecting quotes from the uh, defensive players that were talking about how difficult he was to cover. So I think they went into this spring with some real intrigue about what he could do. He was kind of a bit of a an unknown for everybody else. But that was a late addition, I want to say second part of the, the signing cycle um, that they got out of Nashville that there was some real – real excitement for but you knew you were at least a year away from when he was going to be able to help the team. Yeah, Ja'Cory Barney and Demetrius Belton, one's a freshman, one's a redshirt freshman. They're almost the exact same size. They're littler guys, six foot 170. Okay, we've buried the lead enough here. What the quarterback, you know, the, the quarterbacks are under the microscope always, especially this spring because of circumstances. What have you been able to ascertain about, we'll call it that race? you know, Dylan Rayola and Daniel Kalen in particular? I mean, I haven't, I haven't put a lot of brain power into it, Steve. I, it, it's going to be, to me, it's going to be Dylan Rayola until there's some reason that it's not. Yeah. That would seem to be a health thing. And yep. um, I I like Daniel Kalen a lot. I think it's big that they were able to keep him from going somewhere else last December. But I think he's a, a guy that's going to need a red shirt. Um, he's a guy that I think it would, behoove him to get a lot of time behind the scenes of working with Glenn Thomas and putting in the film study and continuing to get bigger and stronger uh, because that's what he did as a, as a sophomore when he wasn't the starter at Bellevue West. And then he shows up for his junior year and he rips up Class A defenses to the tune of 38 touchdowns and, uh, you know, it was fantastic. We had a little bit of a struggle senior year, but had some protection issues there and some injuries, but um, he's a guy that I think still needs some time. And so I don't really view him as a ready-made, ready-to-play option. I'm sure, you know, I, I saw all the, the commentary of how he looked the other day in the open portion of practice, and that's great. But I just think the reality is he's probably not likely going to be able to step onto the field and drive you, you know, 75 yards for a score if you need it. I just don't know that he's at the level that Dylan is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mentally and, and physically to be able to handle that aspect, that jump uh, from Class A football in Nebraska to being a starting quarterback. So I view him more as a long-term thing, but it's great that he's on track with it. And he's a guy that's just going to go to work. He's someone that I think there's so much value if you can keep him happy at Nebraska because eventually you're going to need him. And I think eventually he's going to pay off, and you want to be there for that payoff. I think there's a somewhat, we're going to switch sides of the ball here, Michael. Um, I think it's somewhat dangerous conversation out there. And I think we assume, there's an assumption that Nebraska's defense will be better this season. Is, do you, is that, are, are you assuming that? Is that an assumption in your mind? Uh, no, because I think last year there was some benefit to how down the Big Ten West was across mm-hmm. the board offensively. I mean, I don't know that it's going to be the same, obviously, the Big Ten West, as we know, it doesn't exist anymore. The schedule is going to be slightly different. But I think overall, the grouping, I, and statistically, they might not be as good. But I think that they have earned the trust of certainly the coaches and then, you know, themselves, but also the fans. Like, I I expect them to be good. I don't know that I expect them to be dominant. It is sort of how I would categorize that. But I I'm excited about what they have. I mean, I'm excited about that defensive line in particular. Uh, you know, it feels in a lot of ways kind of the uh, similarity to where this wide receiver room is headed, where they're just kind of stocking some talent. We're going to see some guys break out. Uh, you know, in that wide receiver room, we saw some guys break out and Ty Robinson and Nash Hutmaker last year. And then there's guys behind them. you. got Sue Lapotu and you have Riley Van Poppel and, and others that are going to be big players for you. Um, this year that we're getting reps, important reps, last year as true freshmen. I mean, how many times was it we find out after the fact that you'd see him on the field and you'd hear about it after the fact, you know, Riley Van Poppel was instrumental in some of these fourth down stops as an extra defensive lineman. Like, they got valuable playing time out of their 2023 experience. Some of these guys are going to take a nice step and they're going to have a good defensive line. I worry a little about that second level. I don't know what that exactly is going to look like. Mm-hmm. Uh, replacing Luke Reimer and Nick Henrich and some of the, the veterans that you have there. You know, but Mike Hyde Bear has the athleticism that I think can replace Luke Reimer. And then we'll see where Stephon Thompson finds himself. And then the secondary, I think they have a lot of intriguing pieces, and I think that'll come together pretty well. 
Uh, but it, the one guy, I haven't been over there for the open portion. One guy that keeps coming up in the Husker 24-7 chat circles is uh, Dry Hill and just yeah. his overall size and, and what that might look like, yeah. you know, opposite of Tommy Hill, who finished year fantastic. Mm-hmm. Chief, in regards to recruiting, we're 16 days away from the spring game. Are you expecting a flurry of commitments coming up? Or what, what does the rest of the month look like for Nebraska in terms of uh, recruiting? Yeah, you know, the, the shocking thing is when I went away, I think Nebraska had three commitments. I came back to have three commitments. I was a little surprised by that. And so I think there's going to be a lot of activity. They've had a lot of visitors in already in, in March and early April here for practices and using the spring game for official visits for the first time. Uh, I think there's going to be some local guys that are likely to make decisions here sooner than later. Um, but, yeah, it, a lot of it has kind of fallen into this. If you aren't committed before you get to April, chances are you're trying to at least get to June uh, to take some of these official visits. Nebraska's moved their calendar up earlier than what we've seen from previous coaching staffs to take advantage of that spring game and to have official visitors for that. So I would anticipate the commitments are going to start happening here. I continue to wonder if they're going to take as big of a class as they did last year. Uh, because I just don't know. I mean, there's many guys that they like on this roster. They're still going to have an exodus of players when it comes to the transfer portal. So a lot of it's going to be dictated by how young this roster is and how many of these guys they want to see through into the next year for how many recruits they ultimately take in this 2025 class. Schaefer sounds energized oh, to me. Man, Schaefer, that's Ooh. a good job. Good job. This, you know, you're, you're talking to actual adults instead of just uh, – <laughs> You know, your eight-week-old son. Hudson. Yeah, Hudson. There's a lot more that you could say here. Hudson yep. doesn't understand the concepts of recruiting at this point. One of these days, I'm going to call and ask for Hudson. Yes, yeah, Hudson around, please. <laughs> I don't want to eat Mike. Be Hudson, please. <laughs> Schaefer, thanks for the time, man. We'll talk to you soon, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. Wow, wow. Mike Schaefer, 24-7 Sports. Always a fountain of information. Tell there. me he didn't sound energized. He sounded energized. He had good information about Ja'Cory Barney. Ja'Cory Barney and Demetrius Bell are definitely guys to watch in that receiver core, that, that, that expanding receiver core, that expanding group of, well, to say names that are kind of presenting themselves to us. It's a good thing. I mean, you know, Jake, we've done this show eight years. How often have I harped on the receiver core not being big enough, not being good enough, <laughs> right? It's an everyday conversation. Well, not just every day. Every day. But – I now Michael is more he's more Michael Schaefer is a little more critical of the running back room. He said it's been ten years since they've had a good running back. <laughs> well, I think they've had good I think Ozigbo was, was good. Yeah, he, he averaged seven yards a thousand yard season. Yeah, he had a thousand yard season, averaged seven a carry that year. But see, this is where I always talk about how I feel as a media group, as a fan base, we sort of lowered our standards in a very low key way. Like you, we we bring up Divino Zigbo. Well, how how I mean how what's Ozigbo done in the NFL? He was a fringe NFL player for years. That's not that's fringe. that doesn't get you where you need to be. Nope. Ozigbo was good. He was fine. He was fine. He was better than fine for a year. But if you're gonna get to Michigan level, you need a Blake Corum and you need a guy behind him that can do serious damage. Um why can't Nebraska be that program? The answer is this. It can. It can be that program. But it's sort of interesting to me that we've kind of let that conversation slide a little bit. Don't. Don't. Thanks again to Mike Schaefer. Wonderful stuff from 24-7 Schaefer. Sports. He's energized. He's energized. He didn't, did, did he not sound energized? He sounded good. He even said that was fun. Thanks. Texted good. me that. Yeah. That, was, that was fun. Yeah. God good to have him. Schaefer back. Yeah, he was excellent. When we come back, Bill's Thrills. Cool parenting tips Thursday on Early Break on the Ticket. You're listening to Early Break with Steve Simmel. Jake Sorensen and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Unearth the secret to long-lasting tires at Treads Central Tire Pros, a league apart in commitment, service, and expertise. This isn't just about rubber meeting the road, but trust, safety, and surety converging in perfect harmony. This is where expectations are exceeded every time. Make your appointment today at Tread Central Tire Pros just south of Cortland on Highway 77 or visit our website to explore our services. Remember, when it comes to tires, choose Tread Central Tire Pros because we tread differently.
Perch Merch is your one-stop shop for all your printing and promotional needs in Lincoln, Nebraska. They specialize in screen printing, embroidery, vehicle wraps, window wraps, print collateral, promotional products, and signage. At Perch Merch, they are committed to delivering high-quality products and exceptional customer service. Their experienced team of designers and printing professionals will work with you every step of the way to ensure that your vision is realized. Call for a quote today at 402-217-5212 or go to perch-merch.com. Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fear's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fear's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Spring is here and it's time to wake up Judson. Judson Irrigation is eager and ready to get your sprinkler system up and running for the season. Judson's technicians will check for winter damage, adjust your sprinkler heads, and show you how to set your controller for effective sprinkling coverage. The Judson Irrigation team is here for you. Stay safe. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Community means something different to everyone. But for me, it means cheering on those around you during the good times and helping them out during the tough times. I'm softball player Jordy Ball, and I've been blessed with the support of my friends, family, coaches, and community throughout my life. When looking for a bank to call home, it was easy to choose Midwest Bank. I never feel like just another customer, and they're proud to support their communities. They love what they do, and it shows. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. The Omaha Supernovas are back in action this Saturday, April 13th, versus the Atlanta Vibe at Gas South Arena in Atlanta. The Mullen Motors pregame show with Derek Pearson and Renee Saunders starts at 5 p.m. with first serve at 6. Make sure to tune in to the next Ag Appraisal Realty postgame show right after the match ends. Catch all the action on your flagship station, 93.7 The Ticket, and statewide on the Supernovas radio network. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. NIPCO is hiring CDL drivers for ready-mixed concrete, Husker concrete, and Beatrice concrete. NEBCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEBCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEBCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. Nutrition Authority invites you to try Anarchy, which is an exciting free workout for athletes and fitness enthusiasts who want the most out of their workouts. Anarchy can only be found at Nutrition Authority. Remember, when you want results, the solution is simple. Nutrition Authority. Stop in, call, or check us out at MyNutritionAuthority.com. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Sandhills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. This. Anybody who knows me knows I was cocky out of the womb. <laughs> His early break with Sip and Jake. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. Weekday mornings from 6 to 8 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com.
You know, we've mentioned several times that the weather has been great today. Yesterday is going to be great. The next 10 days, it's time to get out and start grilling. Is it going to be great the next 10 days? I mean, today's like 64. Is that okay to you? Sounds pretty good to me. Are you making that call, though? It's going to be great the next 10 days. Uh, yeah, the weather. This weekend, both days in the 80s. How's that sound? It's almost hot. Hot. That's almost hot. Hot. Well, that's because it's barbecue season. And hot. there's one person that knows those products better than anybody else. And that's Chris out in Holdridge at Score One Smoking. Barbecue rubs and sauces for both competitors and backyard grillers alike. Not just competition barbecue. He also caters around the Holdridge area for large events. Go support the online store. Score One Smoking.com. It ships anywhere. They'll ship anywhere. You could be in Washington. You could be in Thailand. They'll ship it to you. Barbecue always sounds good. Because it is always good. It always sounds good. Any time of year, too. Like, it's not... No, but like if what somebody say to me the other day, well, summer's good barbecue time. No, winter's good barbecue time too. I mean, it is. It's always good barbecue. Warms the soul. <laughs> yes, you had a pulled pork salad the other day. I did, and I would get that again. And you bit your. Hey, how is your? The, hold on. Yeah. Up, uh, update. Should we do a breaking news? Well, we could do that right now. Yeah, do a breaking news uh -huh. sounder. How is your cheek? The cheek is better, but it's not all the way back yet. You uh, bit your cheek. I noticed this morning drinking my coffee. I told you yesterday that was rough because it was just going right to the wound, right? That was horrible. Still going to the wound in some regard, but it's not uh, It's not as open as it was. It's definitely covering up now. We so heard, we're, not, we're not all the way back, but we are getting there with the wound. We heard, we heard from our friend, Paul Klempa, the Nebraska bowling coach, Paul Klempa, friend of the show. He did text friend. us yesterday, yeah, group chat. And he said this, Jake, I know how it feels to bite your inner cheek. <laughs> it hurts like hell and it's prone to being bit again. That's what you I have did, to avoid. I did bite it again, but it didn't open it up completely. My first bite last night for dinner, I, I bit the same spot. Said, Are you kidding me? So Paul was right. The clip was right. We have all bit our cheek at some point. It's a horrible feeling. It's horrible. I know. I feel for you. I didn't, I didn't properly express my... Oh, well, my sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I felt bad for you yesterday. I didn't properly express empathy. It. Empathy is the word. Empathy is the word. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't, but you're better. Yeah, you didn't even I feel say better. <laughs> Again, the coffee is hitting the wound a little bit, but I, I, can, I can deal that with it. That part I don't completely understand. It just, it just goes there. I, it does not. Mine goes straight down. It doesn't. I don't. I don't gargle my coffee. I don't it, because whoosh I'm, it around. Because I'm my... favoring that side though. Hold my on, mouth. Hold on. Right down. Now let's see if you have a wound in your mouth. See if it, if it goes right to it because that's where your brain is. Your brain is thinking more about that spot. Okay. Let's... And so that's where it spend, sends the liquid to. Okay. So I, that, that's I kind just, of by that. That's the psychology right there. That's not bad. That was a. That was a almost odd burst of wisdom from you. <laughs> Odd, yes. <laughs> odd wisdom over here. Uh, also, before we get to Bill's throws, I, I want to plug this again. I showed this yesterday, but we got, we have them here. We all, the shirts have arrived. The three-legged stool shirts are in the building. So if you're look, look, watching on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, L961, there's the shirt. They are in the building. Uh -huh. So we will have, for those who are not in the Nebraska area, we will have an online link for you at some point today. We can purchase these shirts and we will send them to you. We will do that. But for those who are in the Lincoln area and want to pick one up and buy these, the $20, you felt you, you noted that they feel wonderful. It's a good quality shirt. Josh noted that. Oh yeah. Josh did that, but you agreed to, you yeah. agreed. Yeah. High quality shirt, three legged stool. Bill will have his when he those comes are, back those, on Monday. Those are 20 smackaroos, 20 bucks. Yeah, pretty Just good. Buy. Put that in your wardrobe. Today, yeah, come by, pick Who, it up. Who's here? That's Jay Foreman. I saw. Oh, Jay Foreman is in the he house. Gave me a finger. Jay Foreman in the house early. He is here. Yep. All right. Are you ready for Bill's thrills? Um, I'll take care of this one today if you want. Me well, to. we'll both do okay, it. Okay. Here we go. Let's get to Bill's thrills on a Thursday. Here we go. Some call him the most interesting man in the world. That is setting up the morel mushroom yes. bonanza. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a bonanza. Right. Mushrooms grow better with thunder and lightning. Others call him coach. But to everyone else, he's Bill. I want to get one of those military ab stimulators for us to wear during the show. You see, I sent you today. It's time for Bill's Thrills on Early Break. 
sponsored by Dirk, Scott, and Ty at Mid Plains Advisor. Yes, Bill's Thrills, as always, sponsored by Dirk, Scott, and Ty at Mid Plains Advisors, the ATMs, the cash cows of Lincoln. Please call them for an appointment, free appointment, to set up your financial future at 402-730-7387. When Bill is gone, we take over. <laughs> We're for, taking for over. Bill's thrills. We're taking over. We had Dems fighting words Wednesday yesterday. We also yep. have cool parenting tips today. Tomorrow is a film recommendation Friday. Yeah, we don't have to do. He kind we of don't. veered away from film recommendations. Yeah, he's, he's kind of a, a freaky Friday now. Yeah, freaky Friday. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Do you want to start with this one? Or do you you want go ahead and then I'll follow. Okay, well, as as you know, that this weekend should be the, the time right. I just where the baby is born. Right. This is. I just thought this was natural. Okay. We this went is incoming. We, we went to uh, our doctor appointment yesterday. As you do, you know, the last month of the pregnancy, you go in every week. The standard, standard procedure. So we went in and things look good. You know, the, we were tracking to right around this weekend, or maybe just after, possibly no later than Wednesday of next week. We were talking about the, this baby being born, and I, I got, I grabbed myself a cool parenting tip. I picked it up at the doctor's office. Okay. They're offering these books. They said, take this, you know, take one for expecting parents. Okay. And it said, what to expect in your baby's <sighs> first year of life. Okay. I read this. You did? It's a fa- I mean, not, sorry, I didn't read the whole book. It's a long book, I, but I did open up many pages and it's eye opening. Oh, a lot of things we've, we've been doing. Well, it says, you know, make sure you got your daycare picked out. We got that picked out. Everything you got daycare go. picked out. But it's just, it's just noting how um, <laughs> everybody's going to want to give advice and it tells people, don't, don't over give advice to the new parents. Oh, like it's saying in terms of grandparents or friends or okay. people who had kids. All right, I'm not going to do that. It, well, I mean, it, it's like it's fine to give advice, but if it feels like it's stern or it's like just a, a lot of it, it's like let let the parents learn. Oh let us learn. God. We want advice. We want good advice, oh, but also beautiful, we don't want to be overwhelmed no. with advice where it's like this is not fun. I want to learn this experience myself. Yeah, I have no. It had crossed my mind. You know, for show purposes, that topic, should me and Bill be giving you advice? And my thought was, no, that would get old to me if I were you, you know, constant advice from, I'm not doing that. Well, I, I think advice once in a while is fine. It's, it's warranted. It would, it it would get welcome. old. But if it's like, if you see somebody every time and they always say, I would do this, I would do this. It's like, okay, well, this isn't your kid. You know? you know me well enough. I don't do the yeah, advice. You would not, yeah, you wouldn't do that. No, and you know me well. Do, do you? I don't do the advice thing. I'm not the guy that tells people how to live their life. I'm not. I'm a disaster. So I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to tell other people how to be a disaster. Um, the so I, yeah, I, I wasn't going to do that. That's I want to make sure though. people are. That is yeah. interesting that you read that. That was in the book, though. So I'm, yeah. I'm reading the book. Said that say every, everyone's going to want to be excited to see your new your new baby and want to hold them and everything, uh-huh. but but they're also going to want to give advice. And it's just it's yeah. clear to say, listen, uh. if it's getting to a point where it's just too much, to say, uh. hey, yeah, we don't need you. we advice. appreciate your consideration, your thought, but let we we we'd like to learn this process ourselves, absolutely, and do it our own way. So I like I, that. That's not me saying I don't want to hear from you guys about no, no. anybody about hey, you do this, this. No, we certainly need to learn how to be parents. Duly noted. But uh, also, if if someone is telling you I versus like it. saying what you could do, right? That's just not exactly the greatest. No, thing. and you so, and you and your wife, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, are very. I mean, you're very common sense oriented people you're very well you've done well in this world i wouldn't even probably think about giving you advice i wouldn't i mean i I I mean there's some maybe things i would suggest but not i not see i can take this advice from the texas someone says my advice to you is the same as they tell everybody you aren't ready for this but you'll do fine yeah right i I can take that yeah that's yeah that's not yeah it's just like you know yeah sayings you are ready you are ready you are ready. You're ready for everything, it seems like. Adam from Lincoln says, unsolicited parenting advice is the absolute worst yeah. sometimes. Yeah, you're not getting it from me, so don't worry about Anything that. Anything else you want for parenting tips today? Uh, to the game show. <clears throat> no, I mean, I, I mean, I, the one thing I really appreciate about my mom and dad, though, is freedom. And again, this don't hear this as, as advice, but that when I think about my childhood and the way my mom and dad handled it, I was really... I'm really thankful, really thankful for the freedom. They just gave me freedom. I mean, I just 
I mean, even as a little kid, I'd leave the house and it was, it was on. I mean, I, I'd leave the house and at nine or 10 in the morning, come back nine or 10 at night after a full day of fun. And that was Columbus, you know, it's, it, so it was a littler town, but I can, it just, I had a lot of freedom. I mean, my dad let me r- drive the big motorcycle when I was a, a pretty young, 15, driving it to school. And I, I always think, man, it feels like I'm stealing. This is unbelievable. <laughs> let me ride this big dog. Um, so I, yeah, I just, the, the freedom and I'm not telling you to give your young daughter freedom, but I, that's what I appreciated was that I had a lot of freedom, you know, it was just, you know, it was just, you were allowed to grow up. It was fun. Yeah. I mean, just a programming note, uh, whenever this baby is born, I will probably miss, I'll miss a full week. Big, that is big imp- swim is in here though. That is important programming. So that could be Monday of this next week. It could be tomorrow for all we know, but is, no matter what big swims already here, he, he will cover me for a week. Is you guys will be fine. It's interesting to me that we now just refer to him as Big Swim. Nick Sainter, a.k.a. Big, well, more, more like Big Swim, a.k.a. Nick Sainter. So we, he's more Big Swim than Nick. So. Nick Sainter is very much a part of this show. Yes, and I appreciate him for, yeah. for helping me out when I'm gone. But that is Bill's Thrills, Jake's Take, Sip Tips, fun, God, Sponsored that was by good. Dirk Scott and Ty at <clears throat> Mid Plains Advisors. Let's, that was excellent, Jake. That was excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you, the book for being excellent. Yeah, I read that. You last grabbed night. that book. I did. I, I, I've been reading it. It's, it's a very interesting. It's informative. Four six four five six eight five. Call the Dickdown Sip in trivia today and shut up. Simple today is a throwback Thursday. It's kind of, kind of throwback Thursday. Of course, it is the first day of the Masters. Yes, it is. And so you can you can speak in hush tones yes. if you'd like for this game show. Yes, we are doing the Masters. But today's topic is Masters winners by country. What countries are these previous winners from? I'm going to give you a hint. None of the answers are from the USA. So I'm actually I'm I, here's actually let's, let's re- rephrase that. I'm going to give you the country that this person is from. You got to tell me what the person's <laughs> name was. How about that? Okay. Does that make sense? I messed that up. But I will give you the country they're from, the year or years they won. Who is that golfer? Okay. That's what we're doing today. 464-5685. Shut up, Sipple. Starts right now. We've all been there. You're listening to the radio, and then that rage starts to grow inside of you. It starts to consume you. It gets to a point where you just want to yell, Shut up, Sipple! <clears throat> no, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, here's your chance. It's time to shut up, Sipple. Call now to play. 464-5685. Shut up, Sipple. Brought to you by Bagels and Joe. All right, 464-5685. Call the Nick Sip Down in trivia. Today, again, Masters winners by country. I will give you the country. This person is from the years they won. You tell me what that person's name is. As you point out, Sip, what, 33 previous winners in the Masters this year yeah. are major winners. Major, major winners. Major winners. Major winners. A lot of very good players who have had yes. success. Yes. It's a All big right. number. We have Kevin. Kevin, how do you feel about Masters winners today of the past? Well, not real strong. You get an ex-wrestling uh, football coach, but I'll give it a shot. Uh, ex-wrestling football coach? Yeah. Okay. Coach wrestling and football. Well. Yeah, we're this That's is the opposite of golf, my friend. We so. should be evenly matched. You should be evenly yeah. matched. All right, there's <laughs> no lifeline. It's mono e mono because Bill is gone today again. Back on Monday is Bill Bush. Sip. Uh, sorry, this is for Kevin. Kevin, first question goes to you. What Spanish golfer won the Masters in 1994 and 1999? Oh, I got this one. So you got some pressure on you. I got you in a headlock. Jose. You know, I think I answered this question for another radio station uh, with his real name, but I I don't have a guess. Except it's all yours. Okay. He said, I think he said the first name. It's always a ball. <laughs> Brilliant. It looks like that. I'll give it to you. It's Jose Maria Olafabel. But so yeah, you have to, you got it correct. Jose uh, Maria Olafabel. It, it does look like Olafabel. Okay. To give to give that to Olafabel. There you go. Okay. Yes. I only say the easy part. So, okay, that's okay. That's a lead for Sip. You got to write one zero lead. Sip first question to take a two zero lead. What German golfer 
Bernard Masters Langer. Masters in 85 and 93. Ooh, Bernard Langer. Brilliant. Wow, that was that was really bold to, to throw that out before the year. There's not a lot of great no, German. Not. I mean, Martin Keimer never won the Masters. He won a PGA in the U.S. Yeah, Open. I wasn't coming up with Martin Keimer. Uh, back to you. Stay alive, Kevin, down 2-0. What Australian golfer won the Masters in 2013? 2013. 11 years ago. That'd be the Sharks. You going Greg Norman? Yeah. And that is a golf victory for Sip on a Thursday. The answer, Adam Scott, one of the nicest swings in all of professional golf. But, Kevin, we'll get you back on the copy. Thanks for calling in and calling down the road. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your show. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Kevin. Kevin. Thanks for Kevin for being. How about that? You wanted a golf trivia today. Yeah, and he was a very uh, gracious loser. You you shouted out Bernhard Longer's name. Yeah, how about that? Well, let's let's keep going. I was what, still plugged in in, in the eighties. I you think know that. I think you'll get this one right. Uh, what Canadian golfer won the Masters in two thousand three? A Canadian. Canadian. A Canadian won the. Yep. One in 2003. That's I right. don't know that name, Jay. Lefty Mike Weir. Oh, okay. Small so guy. Real, not, small he does guy. have a pretty swing. It's kind of got a weird yeah, swing. It's quirky swing. It's quirky. Yeah. Quirky start to it. Tiebreaker. Tiger Woods has played in 26 Masters tournaments. How many times has he finished in the top 10? 26 tournaments. Top 10 finishes. 12. Mm, close. 14. Mm. 14 times the top 10 of 26 okay. and five wins for Tiger Woods. Play the music. Which one? The horns or the actual Masters music? Masters music. Okay, we do that right now. It's getting our hushed tones here as we uh, welcome the Masters here. What you just saw, friends, was a victory for Steve Sippel and golf trivia here on a Masters Thursday. I surprised even myself. We are that. not in Augusta, Georgia, but it feels like at this moment that we are. The mood is striking. We're sitting here at 1040 O Street having a cup of coffee, as you might in Augusta, Georgia. I don't see azaleas. I don't see azaleas either, but we can pretend like they're out there. And yes. this music makes it always feel like there's azaleas nearby. It does. This will be a warm embrace this weekend, which could be a very eventful one for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not for me. <laughs> it might be very eventful, and this music should be how I, what I play when it's that time, maybe, to calm yeah. us all down. Perhaps. Perhaps. So we'll go, to, we'll go to break on this music, and we'll come back with a spillover. How about okay, that? Hey, thank you. Next on this Masters Thursday on Early Break on the Ticket. You're listening to Early Break with Steve Sippel, Jake Sorensen, and Bill Bush on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Homeowners, are you tired of paying for a lawn care service when the results are leaving your lawn lifeless and full of weeds? Is your lawn sick of being ghosted by your service provider when they don't show up? Maybe it's time for a switch. At Weedman Lawn Care, excellent results, proactive communication, and superior customer care is what we're all about. Don't take my word for it. Check out our Google reviews. See the Weedman difference on your lawn. Go to Weedman.com and get 50% off your first application with your program. Terms and conditions apply. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth. 93.7 The Ticket. Community means something different to everyone. But for me, it means cheering on those around you during the good times and helping them out during the tough times. I'm softball player Jordy Ball, and I've been blessed with the support of my friends, family, coaches, and community throughout my life. When looking for a bank to call home, it was easy to choose Midwest Bank. I never feel like just another customer, and they're proud to support their communities. They love what they do, and it shows. Your community, your bank, Midwest Bank. 
Lane's Cover Crop is your one-stop seed shop. Call us now for spring and summer forages, CRP mixes, and fall cover crop blends. We do farm-specific consulting for practical and efficient seed blends to fit your geography and goals. With a very diverse inventory, we will tailor a blend just for you. We're also looking for contract growers, and we buy and sell rye. Find us online at plainscovercrop.com. Timeless agronomy practices paired with modern technology. East Highway 20 in Orchard and across Nebraska. Gainet Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gainet Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gainet Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozen. Education is a cornerstone to building a strong, vibrant community. I voted for the historic increase in funding for education in the legislature. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband Reggie and I are local business owners and understand the valuable role of education in our community. This is Carolyn Bozen, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th, paid for by Bozen for Legislature. Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top-shelf liquor to crowd-favorite beer, Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Ballard. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why as your senator, I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. Empower a child today with a teammate's mentoring program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting LincolnTeammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the teammate's mentoring program today. At Doan University, we build leaders. And that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours, and our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. One action, no matter how small, can have a world of impact on the life of a child. Cedar started because one couple believed that they could provide a child with a better life. And that belief grew into the Cedars that we know today, a powerful force for good that helps thousands of kids across Nebraska. Belief grows. At Union Bank, people don't have your money. Your money has people. First home people, investment people, people people, people who answer the phone and your chats, dream car people, dream retirement people, driving your dream car and your dream retirement people, small business people, credit card people, and all the other people you need. At Union Bank, our people help you do more than you dreamed possible. So stop in and say hello. We can't wait to see you. Union Bank and Trust, member FDIC. We're on the air. Back. Well, party's starting early today, isn't it? To more of Early Break with Sip and Jay. Brought to you by Gaina Trucking. <laughs> on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. It is time for the spillover with Raf and AD. Sponsored by our friends at Computer Hardware 70th and O. Go see Trip and Company. Get your... Apple products, fixed watches, phones, computers, 70th and 0, also uh, Hastings, Carney, and GI. I'm looking outside. Good good work, Sip. Good spot. 
because we in the early stages of us being down here at uh, 1040 O Street, we had some shenanigans on the trash can in the, in the tree and the post and the recycling can out there. And I, we have some shenanigans back again because there is a post on the trash can <laughs> that says trash as usual 0.5, which is, of course, a reference to song of the day. I think so. With the red hat. What 100% has to be uh, to song of the day. You see, that? you see it on the black Oh, that on? one. It says right. trash as usual. Could he just be rating our show in general? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> or a she. It could be a she, too. Yeah, I mean, I how long, has that, been there? Right yeah, how long has that been there for? I didn't notice that. I just right noticed it right now. That's Damn. the song of the day. Right? Good, good job, somebody. Yeah. Trash as usual. You know, and it could be Eric. Eric is the one who usually calls my songs trash on the text <laughs> line. So, Eric, because you've done that, I have to assume that's you that put down the trash. Maybe, thing. maybe. That's interesting. I hope it's just Continue. song of the day and not now, a show. I think that's got it. Because it has a rating, it has to be probably a song of the day yeah. reference. So, thank you. All right. So, yeah. Raf and AD are with us. You know what song never gets a 0. 0.5? Do it. Do it. You hear that, AD? Hello, Hello friends. Phones. But I already, I can already tell. Mm. It's one of That's, the sweetest songs ever. That, my friends, is the sound of the masters. A little bit of a delay today because of weather in Augusta, what Georgia. Time are they starting? They said no that? earlier than 9 a.m., but I think it could be late morning, maybe early afternoon for the tea time is beginning in Augusta. Scott Scheffler is the favorite to win this year's tournament. Today, is, uh, SIP is called Scotty <laughs> Scheffler's Scotty <laughs> Scheffler, and now Scott Scheffler, Scott. apparently. So What's we his name? Go get him, Scott. Scotty oh, Scheffler. You can't go by Scott. He goes He goes by Scotty. Scotty Scheffler is the 13-4 to 4 favorite to win it all. John Rahm has to be a choice. We're talking in our golf tones right now. Which is the Scotty, Sh- Scotty Scheffler won the tournament in 2022. <laughs> on a four-putt to win. Sheff- he four-putted the 18th hole and still won by one or two strokes that day. He, was, he could afford to four-putt. He did, and it was weird, but he did. <laughs> Greatest player in the world right when now. When we talk about Hello, a, the Masters, <laughs> this is incredibly annoying <laughs> to people, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've been called coons in the text line, right? Goons. 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 Trash yes. as usual. Yes. <laughs> there you go. There's your uh, Augusta National <laughs> match. You You're welcome. Uh, as long as this tournament ends as it's supposed to on Sunday, I don't care how long it's delayed today, make sure it ends properly at like 5 p.m. on Sunday, right? Well, okay. I mean, you want to start as soon as possible no, because it's just the, they, said, they said they'll be fine. The only thing that they're running into – for worrisome for a golfer is Tiger. They think that maybe Ooh. Tiger might have to golf, you know, extra holes tomorrow. And they're, you know, Tiger's good probably for 18. We mm. think we're not sure because he hasn't, you know, he didn't make it through his first tournament of the year. So because what, Tiger, what's the problem with Tiger? I mean, well, why, Tiger is old. He's, he's just older. He's, he's broken down. He's got injuries on every part of his body. The guy's just, he's a walking He's bionic. Yeah, he's bionic. Well, he's not. Bionic. But don't forget, he had that horrible car accident a couple years ago, yeah. which we lucky right. to, to survive. So that was a part of this deal, also. Right. Think it, about the Augusta with Tiger's body uh, group text with some buddies last night. If Tiger, the the key thing is if Tiger's body can hold up under the conditions at Augusta. Augusta, yeah. is not walking um, Pioneers, Pioneers Park. No, you know that is one of the most. Um, really? uh, grueling up and down courses there is and plus it's a hard course now tiger knows it like the palm of his hand because he's played it so many times and it's won it five times you know, five times but five times but regardless if your body does not hold up and then you look at the conditions it'd be great if it was warm yeah you know but you look at a lot of conditions to where if, if tiger's body holds up it'll be interesting but i mean it's for all the players you hope they're not doing a thing to where they're playing you know 27 holes one day you know yeah, and, then they, and then start again you know, or finish up a nine and then play. It's just. Oh, I get it. Yeah, I But you know what? It's out of their hands based on the weather. So there's nothing they can do about it. We've we got a couple updates here on the Masters in terms of start time. Uh, thank you to the who person who texted in the screenshot from Masters.com. It says as of 735, uh, the first round will begin at 1030 a.m. Mm. Eastern time. So 930 this time off the number one tee. Uh, honorary starters will be at 10 a.m. Patron gates open at 930 that time. So also Greg and Myrtle Beach. Is, is, that, is that the Masters? He's been there like for many years in a row. Mm-hmm. Nice. He says, we'll be lucky to start before lunch. Worst Augusta weather since day Huskers got Bryce McGowan's commitment a couple years ago. Wow. I, I wonder how bad the weather is. I mean, they were saying, what, what were the winds It's public night? information. It is public information. Between 35 and 40 mile an hour oh, winds that's not good. and, and, and a lot of rain. 
rain. Yeah, that's... You know, don't forget last year, I think on Friday, it was horrible weather. And and that's when the tree came down. There's a yep. massive tree that came down. And luckily, nobody was hurt Just by that. Yep. There was spectators everywhere. And yeah. this massive tree falls down. No one gets hurt at all. This becomes a mental toughness test for golfers. Yeah, for every, who's mentally every, tough? Every golf. Well, it is. Play. But when you add the weather to the equation, the mental toughness aspect kicks up a few notches yeah who can handle it who can handle who can the handle starts it? the stops yeah the the, the atmosphere the well pressure. just the plain and cold and mm-hmm. bad weather mm-hmm. yeah. and it looks like it's just today once that's good once we can survive with today, one bad the rest, day. rest of the weekend is sunny and nice so mm-hmm. are you taking the favorite scotty scheffler i am i'm taking scotty <laughs> you know scotty is playing awfully well right now i don't think you can sleep on victor hovland either yeah, he's um, going through a swing change, though. Yeah, he's going through For a swing change. For some reason, change. I'm not sure why he's doing that. I, I think right now Scheffler is probably the favorite uh, going in. He's he been is. playing so hot. He is the favorite. Yeah, he, it's, he's going to be tough to beat. But, you know, again, it's the master, so you never know. No, John, John Rom could go back-to-back. Back. He's played well in the Live Tour so be, far. Beware of Brooks. 54 holes. Always beware, beware of Brooks, Brooks Kepka. You yeah. like Kepka? You like him? I, he's just one of those. He's one of those majors guys. I mean, yes, if, he he, if he's healthy and feels good, watch out. He's always yeah. he's Brooks always there. Kepka. He rubs some people the wrong way. I don't have a problem with him. I'm mean, just like he just speaks his mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, he's he is who he is, and like Raf said, I mean, he he shows up for the majors most oh, of the time. Is. Very rarely is he out of the hunt when it comes to a major. Yeah, he's a tough you know? customer. Brooks Kepka. Yeah, I, I I root for Brooks. I know he's on live now, and he's he's not seen as the most popular guy. I like that guy. To what? To He's what? Dude. To what was yeah. our friend Rick Heyman referring today? Is it awkward on the broadcast when there's a live golfer? Well, it's just they're not sure if they should root for them or support them because they they left the tour. Now all, they can only play in tour events when it's majors, which like they're like that's great. We want to play in the majors. That's all we want to win is the majors. And so yeah, it's just it's just awkward still how to celebrate them, how to talk about them because. You know, it's still a PGA Tour event mostly, awesome. but live golfers are, are allowed to play because they, the guys who have who have status or have won before yeah. get to come back no matter what. Yeah. Phil's back. I mean, Bubba Watson's a live golfer. He's that back. John Rahm, John Rahm, Sergio Garcia. That doesn't have to be awkward. I don't. No. I wouldn't think we're getting to a point. It's getting less awkward. Yeah. So enjoy the Masters. Uh, we'll also have some Matt Rule audio tomorrow on the show. He talks today after practice. That's it for us. The drive with Raf. AD and Amon Green is next for Steve Sipple and Bill Bush. I am Jake Sorensen. We will talk to you tomorrow. Gain Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gain Trucking.